Hello, good morning and welcome to the fourth day here of the British Gas Swimming Championships 2014. We're coming live here from the Tollcross International Swimming Centre all the way in Glasgow. Now we've been bringing you all of the live up-to-date action as it happens here on the live feed. That's all the heats, the semi-finals and of course the finals, not to mention all those nomination times that we've had into the mix there as well. Now this week I've been joined by the lovely Kerry Ann Payne, Olympic silver medalist, giving her expertise and knowledge, which you've provided great detail with so far. So Kerry Ann, happy with the event, I guess. Yeah, it's been a really great event so far. I think there's been a lot of really fast swims, um, a lot of one, number two, number three in the world times at the moment. So it's great that we've that at this meet we're having so many people do such uh, world class times. And what's been a highlight for you so far? I know we've had lots of swims. It's really <laughs> difficult for you to choose one or two. But what have been the, the couple of highlight events for you? Probably the biggest highlight for me has been um, James Guy's breaking the British record in the 400 freestyle on the first night. That was pretty yeah. spectacular. And then I must admit that Ross Murdoch's uh, 100 breaststroke last night, he was just one 100th of breaking that British record for the men's 100 breaststroke. And it just was such a great swim. He timed it to absolute perfection and he just ex executed exactly the plan that he wanted to do. And we mentioned the, the field of the women's 200 metres breaststroke was incredible last night, the final, wasn't it? Yeah, well, Sophie Taylor, you know, she's 18, she's quite young, she's not really a 200 breaststroker, so she just decided to come in here and she was just going to absolutely hammer it from the start. She was about a body length ahead from the 50, the first turn at the 50. Molly Renshaw tried really hard to reel her back in, but she is a back-end swimmer, so she tried really hard to reel her back in and just couldn't quite do it at the end, but a spectacular time. Again, just missing the British record for the 200 breaststroke, but 100 breaststroke is this morning, so Indeed. I am really excited to see what Sophie can do. She yeah. broke the 100 breaststroke record about a year ago so she's due a bit of a drop in that as well so it'd be great if we could see her 66 today. Indeed and we've been saying how exciting it is for the junior swimmers up and coming because we've got some incredible talent haven't we? Yeah we've had a load of really great uh, junior swims this morning uh, sorry not this morning this week so far um, and, and it's really great that the juniors get to have that finals swim at night so there is a, a, an opportunity for them to swim in the same pool where the Commonwealth Games will be later on this, uh, this year and then you Know, to swim in the same lanes as, as people like Michael Jameson and um, Adam Peaty and uh, Ross Murdoch and James Guy. So it's really cool that these kids get to swim in here and, and I've seen lots of their faces and they've just been so happy to be swimming here and doing finals at night and just swimming really well. And it must be great for you to be on this side of the pool, to be able to watch all the action without having to go into the warm-up pool or swim down pool or, or get ready for a race. You can just sit back and enjoy the racing, can't you? Yeah, you haven't really been able to keep me out of the water though, have you? You've tried Not really. hard. <laughs> <laughs> but I have had a couple of little swims. Um, it's just really nice to kind of get in. But I, I just really am enjoying this side of the thing. So I've not retired from swimming, but taking some time out of the competitive racing this year. There's no open water in the Commonwealth. So it was kind of perfect timing for me to take some time out this year. And um, I'm so glad, though, that I'm still here and I'm still involved and I can still cheer on all of, all of my club and all of my friends who are hopefully making the teams this summer. So making the teams. Well, we've got a, a great morning of heats this morning. What's going to be uh, the highlights for you? Because we have got a few heats, haven't we? So we've got the women's 200, uh, sorry, the women's 200 medley this morning, yeah. uh, which will see Siobhan Marie O'Connor in that. And I really can't wait to see. She had an absolutely fantastic 200 freestyle on the first night as well. So she'll be back in again today doing all four strokes. And it's an absolute sprint from the start. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how she gets on with that. And then probably looking forward to seeing Sophie Taylor in the 100 breaststroke again later on, just to see what she can do in the morning, backing up after that 200 last night and uh, and then we have Francesca Halsall again today in the 100 freestyle so all the girls this morning yeah a bit girl power <laughs> this morning because yeah. we've had some great swimming from from the guys particularly the 200 breaststroke has been a highlight for me uh, yeah. Michael Jameson having an incredible swim but it, it kind of all changed didn't it when we moved to the 100 breaststroke um, the, the field just completely changed yeah well the breaststroke is such a different event on the first night we had the 200 breaststroke we had Michael Jameson absolutely storming the field two seconds ahead of everybody which is just amazing he was so close to kind of getting to getting that world record which I know is something that he wants to do and then we had the 100 breaststroke which is the turn for um, for Ross Murdoch and Adam Peaty to you know completely blow Michael out of the water on that so for somebody that that is number one in the world on the 200 breaststroke you know he's he's around about there on, on the 100 but it's just such a 
different race. And then today we also have the men's 50 brushstroke, which again will be a completely different race. We have a few new names in there that we didn't have in the 100, although we do have Ross going back in that swim again. So he'll want to make sure that he's got he's done the double of the 100 and the 50. Indeed, and making sure that there's going to be lots of rest for the swimmers, because we've seen a lot of swimmers doing multi-events yeah. in the event, aren't we? Yeah, so there's loads of uh, people doing loads of different races. So we've got um, Ellie Faulkner today and doing the 800 a little later on. So she did the 200 freestyle in the last couple of uh, nights. So she's going to really looking, be looking to get that 800 this morning to be really fast. So even though this is the, you know, predominantly the England trials, we'll still have Jazz Parling in there as well. So she's been pre-selected for the Welsh team. But she is really going to want to make sure that she has a great heat this morning as well so she can show the world exactly what she is and where she is at the moment. Well, we'll certainly be picking your brains on the, for the, the 800 metres later. Now we move on to the action with Bob and Joanne Jackson for the women's 200 metre backstroke heats. Thank you, Hannah and Kerry Ann. Very good morning to you. Welcome to day four of competition at the British Gas Swimming Championships 2014. Opening event of the morning is the 200 metres backstroke for women. Heat number one, we have eight to go. Karen Reed of South Ayrshire in one, Megan Gibson of Nuneaton in two, Bethany Newton of Taunton in three, Savannah Jemmett of Monson in four, Abigail Humphreys, City of Coventry in five, Emily Cutler of Kelly College in six, and then Ella Duthi of City of Aberdeen in seven, Hannah Jones going to Stockport Metro in lane number eight, the first of six heats so, of the women's two and backstroke. Let's say good morning to Joe Jackson. Good morning. It's great to be here again this morning. Been really looking forward to this 200 backstroke. We've got Elizabeth Simmons going later on in the morning, and she had a good 100 backstroke last night, and the 200 is her main event, so it'll be great to put her disappointment from last year behind her and put in a world-class swim today. We are looking at the class of 98 and 99 here, so we're looking at the 15, 16-year-olds involved in the opening race, so looking to bring down the personal best. The great thing about the mornings we've seen so far, Joe, is how many big personal bests we've seen from the youngsters coming through. Yeah, that's great to see. You want to see the youngsters doing personal best in the heats to then go through to the junior final later on this evening. They need to produce good swims. When they get onto the international stage, they will need to produce personal best in their heats swim so it's great that they're getting out there on the morning and swimming really well and they're going out really well here as well turning in a 106.9 so that's a great first 100 from emma cutler from kelly college and looking really strong down that third 50. yeah she and hannah jones of stockport metro in the outside lane lane number eight are blazing the trail here emily cutler though has about a body length advance maybe two body lengths advance coming back into the stream though is the swimmer from city of aberdeen elif Duthi. She is, was fourth at the turn, but she's coming back into it. But just look at the way that Emily Cutler is powering away in lane six. It was very tight between three of them for a while, and suddenly Emily Cutler's uh, gone to another speed. And with 50 to go, she's got a sizable advantage over the rest. It's all of about uh, two seconds over uh, the other swimmers. Yeah, she looked really strong into that turn. She had a great turn, came off the wall. She just needs to keep that going down that final 50, and she is still pulling away from that field. So this could be a great morning swim for her. 2.21.81 is her personal best. Well, she's on course for a very big personal best, providing she doesn't tie up over the last 15. There are a few others that are going to put some pressure on her, but I think it's her race now in terms of winning it and in terms of a fast time. So 2.21 is the best that she's done before. She's in the 2.19 bracket now. 2.19.14 for Emily Cutler. And a Duthie in second place. And third going to Bethany Newton of Taunton Dean. So our first sub 222 of the morning. That's a really big improvement by Emily Cutler. Yeah, great PB for Emily Cutler there. First time under 220, 219.14. So that's a great swim for her, and she'll be really happy with that. On to heat number two of the 200 backstroke for women. So that's the uh, target time for those who are slightly older. We go into the 94s and 95 years here. And uh, that's a close up of uh, lane number. We'll just go six. Yeah, there's um, Courtney Price of Royal Wilmerhampton. 
clubs represented in this one. But we haven't uh, actually got confirmation on uh, heat number one yet properly, have we? Looking at these summers, they're making me feel very old. Stood up here seeing the 98-99 bar. <laughs> I don't think we've got confirmation on the first result yet. Looking up on the board, I don't think we've actually had that uh, declared. Now we have. Now we have. Here it is. Uh, Emily Cutler, 219-14. And Emily Duffy in second place. There you go. There's the confirmation for you of uh, result number one. Took a little while to get it up, but uh, there we go. And then we're on to two, as if by magic. Daniel Baker of Plymouth in one. Georgia Darwin of City of Newcastle two. Catherine Greenslade of Preston in three. Rebecca Cole of Loughborough in four. Yanka Turner of City of Salford in five. Courtney Price of Royal Wolverhampton in six. Jennifer King of North Ayrshire in seven. Eleanor Baldwin of City of Derby is in lane eight. So I mentioned most of these born in the years around 96. There is uh, one older swimmer who's 20 this year. That's Rebecca Cole, but most of the others are 96 born. Oh, it makes me feel old. It makes me feel old. That they're 12 years younger than what I am. And I only finished swimming a couple of years ago. So I'm feeling very old still up here watching these swimmers. But, you know, it is great. We even saw a 2000 born yesterday and that is really scary but yes, they're swimming well it? which is great to see well let's see how this one develops again we're probably looking towards the centre lanes as you normally do though these aren't cyclically seeded so people could come from anywhere here and that's probably what's going to happen here Catherine Greenslade has had a very good start for Preston and she is in lane three and she alongside Jaeger Turner of City of Salford were at the front but as I say that moving into second place at least and possibly into the lead is caught the price of Royal Wolverhampton we featured just now but it is going to be lane three at the halfway stage Catherine Greenslade who will turn in 106.57 with Price in second and Jaeger Turner in third. Yeah, they're looking really strong. We saw some of these girls in the 100 backstroke final last night, so these swimmers will have the speed. They just need to carry that out. And Catherine Green said it's looking really strong. She seems to be pulling away from the rest of the field. And, you know, she's picked up a stroke rate down that third 50, so she just needs to keep that going through this last 100. Well, look at uh, Courtney Price go in lane number six, though, for Royal Wolverhampton. She's had a real spurt on this 50 and will be right alongside Catherine Green Slade at the turn. Who's going to get there first? Just Courtney Price by 31 hundredths of a second on that turn. Greenslade in second and Jaeger Turner in third. That was a really blistering 50 there from Courtney Price. Yeah, that was a great 50. And also Eleanor Baldwin in lane eight was sixth at that last turn and is now fourth. So she's pulling through the fields and looking really strong as well down this last 50. So this is going to be a great race for these. You know, there's the two at the moment neck and neck, so it's all going to be down on the touch. Well, Catherine Greenslade did lose her lead for a bit, but she's got it back now with another 10 metres to go it is going to be the swimmer in lane number three for Preston Catherine Greenslade and 2.18.14 is her time and that's a new personal best for her not a massive one but uh, nonetheless uh, 0.42 better than she ever has been before second is Courtney Price for Royal Wolverhampton and third is Jaeger Turner 2.18.64 the second time 2.19.97 for the swimmer in third That's our uh, second place swimmer. Courtney Price to 18.64. As the uh, result for you as we uh, go to event number three of the morning on the backstroke. Heat number three, and that's your one to eight. So uh, those who can't quite work out the initials, I'll tell you who the clubs are represented here. Alicia McCrory from Derwent side, Candice Hall from City of Leicester, Carnegie represented by Kirsty Simpson, Ella Balkley of City of Birmingham in four, Laura Dawson, University of Stirling in five, Hannah Meek of Nova Centurion in six, Chloe Golding of Ellesmere in seven, and Emma Bell of Oh, yeah, that's a club I've not come across before. Mijas? Mijas. Never, never heard of that no, club before. No, I haven't before. either. All right, M-I-J-A-S. We'll uh, get somebody, I'm sure, on Twitter to tell us exactly how that's pronounced. Uh, Mijas sounds a bit Spanish, or it could be Mijas. OK, um, we're both in the dark on that, so somebody yeah, can enlighten Someone needs us. to tell us. Yeah, please do. <laughs> Emma Bell, we might have to ask her when she comes out of the pool. She's in lane A, but at the moment she's got other things to think about, rather yes, than what does. a club's called. Yeah, and all these swimmers have entered on a 2.17, so they'll be hoping to break that barrier. And, you know, it's great to see these 
during the swimmers coming through, we've had the likes of Katie Sexton, Sarah Price, Gemma Spofford, always been world-class swimmers. And we've also got Elizabeth Simmons. So these swimmers need to start coming through the rankings so we can produce that swimmer again in the 200 backstroke. So, Kirsty Simpson, it is of Edinburgh, who's of uh, Carnegie, is uh, having a, a decent start, flanked on her right, closest to us, by Candice Hall. From Derwent's side, there won't be much to choose between them at the halfway stage. Probably about half a body length between lanes three and two. And in terms of time, about half a second between Kirsty Simpson and Candice Hall in second. Emma Malkley of Birmingham is in third place. That's a great first 100, 104.79. That's the quickest 100 split of the morning so far. And she's not tying up yet. She's still looking really strong. But Candice Hall from the city of Leicester is right on her shoulder at the minute and pushing her all the way. Ella Barkley is trying to make her move through and is starting to make her move through in lane number four. And when they get to the turn, she might be right alongside Laura Dawson. There's not going to be much to choose between them. Indeed, between two, three and four at the moment. Jess Kirsty Simpson from Candy's Hall. We're talking about six one hundredths of a second. That's the gap between first and second. And then third place is Ella Barkley of Birmingham. You can see there Kirsty Simpson had a great turn. She pulled away from the other swimmers, but they are catching her up while the swimmers. So her underwater is better than the other swimmers, but they're actually swimming fast on top of the water and they are pulling back on her side now. Candice Hall will fancy a chance of winning this and she has now moved into the lead just overtaking Kirsty Simpson and Candice Hall has done the, the right work at the right time on the final 50 so she's going to come in with about a half a body length advantage not the grace of finishes from her she needed our Kirsty Simpson back in there 216.44 for Candice 216.73 for Kirsty Simpson and Ella Barkley 218 point one zero so two sixteen forty four the winning time for uh, the swimmer in lane number two just checking where that is in the standings yeah, that's another new personal best as we're kind of expecting from the juniors here but uh, that's that's a good one for her yeah I remember when I was that age knocking out PVs every time you got in absolutely love it when you get older it's a little bit harder to get them personal best so it's great to see them achieving that this morning this was uh, almost the second PB actually for the winner. That's the confirmed result for you. Still have no idea whether the club is in uh, lane number eight, so if anybody can help us and enlighten us, please do. So we want to give all the clubs a mention this week as we, if we possibly can. If we're not quite sure where you're from, it's really difficult, isn't it? Heat number four then of the women's 200 metres backstroke. We're going to get into the. Uh, main movers and shakers in this event as we get through heats four five and six jessica fuller love goes in four for city of manchester aquatics daniel stirrett is in three for city of cardiff charlotte mckenzie of first is in five and Brittany Horton, our city of Birmingham, goes in lane number six. Well, we'll get into the cyclic you see the heats now. So just good full of love should be on paper. Just having a quick check. Yeah, she's in the uh, 210 range. So we've uh, taken a massive jump down from the 216s down to the 210s now. Yeah, and we're actually missing a swimmer in lane five. Charlotte McKenzie hasn't started this race. So Jessica full of love has an, e an empty lane next to her. So she'll want to take this out strong. But she is three seconds quicker than the other swimmers in this heat. So she needs to take out strong and just swim her own race which she is doing at the 50 she turns in 30.56 uh, way quicker than anything else we've seen thus far second laura stevens and third is isabel thwaite of Wirral metro and that's a very strong first 50 for jessica there she looked really strong and there's no semi-finals here this week for the 200 so they need to produce good time she's in the first cycle seeded heat so she doesn't know how the next two heats are going to swim so she still needs to set a good time and a good time she's on course for her best time is 2 10 59 let's look at what kind of split this is going to be 104 14 yeah she's on course for a very quick time whether she's going to quite get a 2 10 or not i don't know because unless she uh, splits it equally here and goes for about two away i can't quite see that but uh, yeah two tens in range yeah definitely two ten would be a great heat swim for her she might back off towards the end of being so frank from but she still needs to keep that stroke rate up and she still needs to keep going strong through this race but when you watch her turn she has great underwater and that's what you see with world class two in the backstroke swimmers they all go to the 12 and a half 15 meters underwater and that's where they pick up their speed 
always worries me a little bit with the backstrokers when they get close to the lane rope. Uh, Ellie Simmons, uh, sorry, Lizzie Simmons does that a lot. Uh, other swimmers in the backstroke sometimes just get across the side of the lane as almost like a comfort blanket and they get a little bit too close. Yeah, definitely. A lot of swimmers are used to swimming around in circles in their clubs and in their training environment and they tend to do that when they're racing as well when they just need to stay in the middle of the pool swimming up and down because technically they're actually swimming further if they're going to either side of the lane and they don't want to swim any further than 200 metres so they just need to stick in the middle and go in a straight line. Won't be a 210 this morning for Jessica Fuller Love. What kind of time can she post? A 2.14.59. She did back off a bit in the second half of that race. Second place going to Brittany Horton in 2.17.20 and Isabel Thwaite in 2.17.92 in third place. So that is the fastest time of the morning so far. But uh, in terms of what she has done before, Jessica Fuller Love, not that rapid. 2.14.59. We expect the next two hits to go a lot, lot quicker. Yeah, we saw Lauren Quigley last night in the 100 backstroke have a great swim. So she's in this next heat now and I think she'll be looking to go a quick time. Yeah, she'd have been disappointed with that 100 where she got right on the cusp of uh, breaking the 60 seconds in the heats and they couldn't back it up in the final. Yeah, it was disappointing to see her not break that 60 point because that's what her aim was coming here to go under 60. But hopefully she'll get that Commonwealth Games relay out um, in, in a few months here in Glasgow and then she'll be able to break that 60 point because that's the cut-off mark for these world-class swimmers. 60 point is what they want to go under and she'll be wanting to achieve that this year. So the one to seven, because we don't have a lane eight. Eliza Duffy of Plymouth is not, or she is, she just appeared on my screen. But lane five we're missing actually in this one. We're missing Natasha Holton of Nova Centurion. She's not in the field. All the other seven are. Stephanie Reynolds of Kelly College in one. Chelsea Lawson of Carnegie in two. Catherine Willis of Loughborough University is in lane three. Four, Lauren Quigley of Stockport. Six, Chloe Hannon of City of Peterborough. Charlotte Evans, City of Milton Keynes in seven. And Eliza Duffy is there. Sorry if I gave you a year, but she wasn't. She's in lane eight for Plymouth Neander. Yeah, Lauren's had a great start there. She was really good underwater and came up looking really strong. And Eliza Duffy in lane eight as well is also looking really strong down this first fifth. And it is Lauren Quigley in a 30.9 turn in first with Eliza Duffy in second in 31.6. So that is a great start for Lauren. Not quite as quick as Jessica down that first 50, but she might try and bring that back stronger. Yeah, I think she'll probably try and, uh, will she try and negative split this one? Yeah, I've seen Lauren do the 200 before and she is really good at keeping a similar pace through the whole of the 200. So I think she'll try and do that this morning, whether she'll swim a different race in the final tonight, but I think she just wants to post a nice strong swim to comfortably get through to the final tonight. Halfway stage for Lauren Quigley and for Stephanie Reynolds, who's uh, snuck up into second place. It's 105.01 at the turn for Lauren Quigley. Second place, 105.23, just eight one hundreds behind with Stephanie Reynolds. This would be a huge improvement if she can keep that kind of pace up, but uh, looking very strong and looking very composed in lane number four, it's Lauren Quigley. Lauren looks very easy at the moment, watching her swim. Her stroke rate isn't that high at the moment. She looks nice and comfortable, and it, it's looking like a really strong swim. She'll want it to feel as comfortable as possible to save all that energy for tonight's swim. But Stephanie Reynolds in one is also having a great swim as well. One of the outside burners, it's great to see that they're pushing them all the way. And, you know, Lauren won't be able to see her in lane number one, so she just needs to be careful that she doesn't back off too much. Well, Stephanie Reynolds' best time before today was 2.16.50. And I'll tell you what, she's going to go considerably quicker than that. She keeps going because if she's uh, not far away from Lauren, you know she's doing a decent time. Also coming back into the mix is Chloe Hannum in lane number six. It will be Lauren Quigley to win this. Uh, can Stephanie Rails keep it going right to the end? She's going to fish in third place here, but it's the time that uh, the concern is, no, she's going to get back into second. She just slipped back for a moment. But uh, yeah, it is first place for Lauren Quigley, 213.37. That is the quickest we've seen this morning. Second place to Chloe Hannon in 215.10. And uh, Sefi Rose did do 215.11. Not quite the fish she was looking for, but nonetheless, a 1.4 personal best for her. Yeah, great PB for Stephanie Reynolds there, going 215.1. She'll be really pleased with that time. But that was a great swim for Lauren Quigley, 213. Good heat swim, and that'll comfortably be put her through to tonight's final. Just one more heat to come, as we see... Uh, Lauren finishing off. Just confirm for you again. 2.13.37 for Lauren. Passes time of the morning. 2.15.10 for Chloe Hannum 
as Stephanie Reynolds at 2.15.11. On to the final heat of the women's 200 backstroke. And Lizzie Simmons is back for more in lane number four. She uh, has been a real stalwart of the 200 backstroke over many years from the age of 13 when she first emerged on the scene at uh, Lincoln. Yeah, Lizzie has just been such a, an amazing swimmer from such a young age. And she's actually ranked fourth in the world this year on a 208.91. So hopefully she can produce a similar swim to that this week. But, you know, Elizabeth's had a really tough couple of years. She's always been there on the scene. Unfortunately, she missed the team last year for the World Championship. So she's now down in battle with David McNulty training and speaking to David. She's had a really good training in cycle so I hope that she can come here and produce a swim that she deserves because she's such a tough trainer I remember training with her for years with Ben Titley and god she's so she's so tough in the water she used to push me all the way so it would be really good to see her swim well just give you an idea of how strong this event is in the Commonwealth all the top four times of the year are by Commonwealth swimmers three by Australians and one by an English swimmer that's Lizzie Simmons at 208.91 she will not do that this morning but she'll be looking to get a, a reasonable plus she'll certainly want to go into the final in lane four. Yeah, definitely. And she'll want to get in that top three, I think, tonight for the world best times. You know, the Commonwealth Games 200 backstroke is such a tough event. You've got Belinda Hock and Megan Ney, who are all world-class swimmers, Olympic medalists. So, you know, she's going to have a tough time at the Commonwealth Games, but she is capable of swimming so much quicker than what she has done. After seeing her train, she could easily go 2.6, 2.7, which she will need to do in the next few months. Well, let's hope she can. She's uh, one of my favourite swimmers because she's always bubbly, she's always lively, she's always uh, positive. She had a really, really, really tough year in 2013, but 2014 has already started much more positively from her point of view with that 208.91 in Berlin. And look at how big the lead is between her and the rest with 50 to go on the turn, 137.45. Have a look at the gap. It's uh, over two seconds, almost 2.4 seconds between her and Rachel Lefley in second and third, Megan Briggs. Good to see Lizzie back in this kind of form. It is great, yeah. I've been friends with Elizabeth Simmons for years and years and years and you know I really really want her to do well tonight she's looking really comfortable at the moment and this is going to be a great heat swim for her and that's what Lizzie needed she needed a strong heat swim to get her confidence up for that final tonight looking very smooth and very controlled on this what kind of time is she going to post it's going to be the fastest by quite some way this morning too 2.12.06 nobody's been down in the 2.12 this morning until she came along and she won that by three and a half seconds, exactly three and a half seconds between her and Megan Briggs in second, Rachel Leffley in third. That's a nice cobweb blowing off for Lizzie Simmons. 2.12.06, she'll be happy with that. Yeah, I think she'll be really happy with that. She just needs to be careful tonight. We've seen her in the 200 backstroke before, go out really, really strong in the first 100 and suffer down that last 25. So hopefully she can have a nice first 100 tonight and bring it back. And you can see her start. She has got one of the world best starts. You can see that she's got the streamline under water comes up really strong she's got such good fly underwater i remember seeing her do 100 200 underwater when i was training with her so she did really well this morning and the finish was really strong as well yeah and right on the stroke as well is what you want you don't want that little glide in at the end which wastes time she was right on the stroke she was yep yeah, perfect finish for her and i think she'll be really pleased with that morning swim so that winning time again, 2.12.06 for Lizzie Simmons, uh, Candice Hall, Rachel Leffley, Megan Briggs, Stephanie Reynolds, Chloe Hannon, Jessica Fuller Love and Lauren Quigley are the other seven who will be in the final tonight. So keeping with Lauren Quigley, you mentioned about her starts, Kerry ann Yeah, so um, Joe just mentioned uh, Lizzie's starts then, but I, I must admit that I've not seen anybody start as well as Lauren Quigley. She just has an absolutely fantastic start. She just comes right out of the water. And I remember seeing uh, Chris Walker Heaven, who is also a backstroke specialist, saying he's not sure if he's seen any girl do a start as good as that. So that's something that she's got you know, to work on as well and um, something and that's it, in her favor. What favorite. is it about the start? What does she do that makes it so, so powerful well she um, she's done a lot of gym work so she's making sure that her legs are really powerful that's pushing her out of the water so her whole body is coming out of the water there's no re um, resistance from her legs as she pushes into the water okay well we'll move on now to the next round of heats it's a men's 50 meters breaststroke men's breaststroke very very strong in England and Scotland at the moment as we saw in the hundreds last night with two very good times two world-class times in the 100 breaststroke. 
We're on to the 50 now. Smash and dash to the breaststroke. And we have some pretty decent operators in here too. Just four to start in heat number one of the 50 breaststroke. James Latham of DaVencio in three. Matthew Norton of Swansea in four. Nick Cook of Derwent Side, five-year-old club. Six, David E. Banks of Romford Town. Yeah, no, Derwent Side, Mario Club. So definitely rooting for new Nicholas Cook this morning. But as you can see, it's neck and neck at the minute going along the way. But David Eubanks does have the edge, I think, over this field going into the final five. Well, I wouldn't want to call it. I'd say we're 15 to go. I think it could be any one of three to be absolutely. Let's just wait for the touch, shall we? It's going to be James Latham, 29.87. That changed complexion over the last 15 metres rather rapidly. And it is one, two, three on the board with James Latham winning it, 29.87. Matthew Norton, 30.03. And Nick Cook, 30.11. And in terms of uh, going sub 30. Uh, two of them had done before, but not the winner. So he's gone sub-30 for the first time as well. Yeah, PB for James Latham there. First time under 30, so great swim there for him. On to the second heat. There are five in total of the men's 50 metres breaststroke. Give you the lineup as they get underway. Kieran McGuckin of Edinburgh 1, James Wilby, Loughborough in 2, Thomas Rook of Coventry 3, Charlie Atwood of Taunton Dean in 4, Neil Redmond of Bath in 5, Matthew Nicholson, Glasgow 6, Benjamin Stuckey of Bath in 7, and Daniel Lim in lane number 8. And we're looking at the swimmers closest to us, actually. We're looking at 2 and 3. Horribly, James Wilby. Yeah, this side of the pool has had a great start, and they've got the semi final, so they need to get that top 16 to go through. 28 4 3 is the time for James Wilby. And that is, oh, that's a big, big, big PB. PB. Yeah, <laughs> big, big, big. That ha that's how big. Standing by a second and a half, 28.43. Thomas Rook in second, 28.98. Should be delighted with that. Yeah. 29.01 for Kieran McGuckin in third. And he had a massive smile on his face when he finished there, so he's definitely pleased with that. And you can see now, you know, he's smiling and he's really happy with that. Yeah, he's, he's taking a second... Well, 1.18 uh, actually was in the end off his uh, previous best, but nonetheless, over a second is a sizable chunk out of your personal best. Right, heat number three of the 50 breaststroke. Craig Benson going in lane number five. We know him probably better as a 100 swim. Well, actually, he's is not, he, yeah, he's not swimming. About, about to say, let's yeah. just look down, and uh, Craig Benson has not appeared. So we're going to concentrate on Christopher Steeples in lane at number four. Joe Wellstead in three going way further. There's four of them on this side of the pool. Again, it all seems to be <laughs> toppled down towards us. One, two, three, and four going well. And also going well is uh, Clifford Stevenson. Four of them going to go to the wall together. Just, I think, lane two. Rob Holden is going to get there in 28.6. 2 3. Second for Joe Wellstead, 28 3 2. In fact, 1 2 3, separated by two one hundredths of a second. Yeah, and that's a PB for Robert Holderness as well in this heat swim, 28.23. So, good sim for him. You know, he's got a little smile on his face. He's not giving too much away, so, but great swim. Nice record. I think I'm right to say. Yeah, that is a Welsh record, so good swim for Robert Holden us this morning. Whew, don't we call that one. <laughs> my, my dodgy close-range eyesight, I couldn't see it, so Joe, help I was me struggling a little bit. <laughs> New Welsh record then for Rob Holders, which is good. Heat number four of the 50 breaststroke four men. Here comes Adam Peaty after last night's great swim in the 100. What can he do in terms of backing it up in the 50? Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing his 50 breast. I did speak to Adam a little bit after his 100, and he was actually a little bit disappointed with it, even though he got the nomination time. So, you know, he'll want to come into this 50 breaststroke and have produce a really strong swim. But Adam Weather it next to him is also having a great swim. Well, can Adam get it back here? It's going to be right on the touch. I think Adam Peaty is just going to get great there. Great finish is. for Adam there. Ooh, really was. good finish. 
points for Adam, and that is just outside his personal best, which is 27.58. But nonetheless, that's a decent swim. And as you mentioned, Joe, a very good finish because with about five to go, it did look like he was going to get beaten there. Yeah, it did look like Andrew whether it was going to get that, but Adam had the perfect finish. You know, he got it right on the touch, and that's how he won that. And 27.66, it's just off his best, but still a strong heat swim for him from after the 100 last night. So we're going to check on the Scottish record with uh, Ross Murdoch to come. Which we will do in just a moment after we've uh, given you the lineup for heat number five. In one, Daniel Scott of City of Glasgow, Richard Spoor of Loughborough in two, Ewan Inglis of Edinburgh in three, Ross Murdoch mentioned, University of Stirling in four, Mark Tully of East Lothian in five, Ross Smith of Stockport in six, Chris Kerr of Warrender in seven, Harry Ackland in eight. What is the Scottish record, Jim? The Scottish record is 27.25, which is set in Eindhoven, um, just over at... Well, no, I think he did it this year, actually. He broke the uh, Scottish record this year. And after his 100 breaststroke last night, that could definitely be up for grabs in the semi or the final tomorrow evening. Well, let's see Willie, what kind of time Ross Murdoch can do in the morning. Is he going to be around the 27 mark? Best so far is 27.66 by Adam Peaty in the previous one. Can he go faster than 20? 27.66, I think he's going to... Yes! Just, yeah. <laughs> 27.62, nearly hoisted by my own petard there. Second, Mark Tully, and third, Ewan English. So a nice, comfortable, safe and controlled swim by Ross Murdoch to start the day for him. In a time of 27.62, Mark Tully in second and Ewan Inglis in third. Yeah, that was a good swim for Ross Murdoch, and I'm really looking forward to seeing Ross and, and Adam fight out in that 50 breaststroke final. You know, you saw them neck and neck in the 100 last night, so it'll be great to see how they then produce over the 50 as well. So, uh, as this goes to semis, Russell Smith getting the final place in 16th, but no problem for the main protagonist, Adam Peaty and Ross Murdoch, come to be through to tonight's semi-finals. So a Welsh record there, Kerry Ann. Not bad on the first morning. Yeah, really, really good for. Uh, <laughs> sorry, really good for, for Robert Holden as then. He had such a great start. I know that he um, he hasn't rested for this. He's Welsh, so he's already been pre-selected. So for him to go such a fast 50 time, I think that's really great. Yeah, but being unrested is is tough, isn't it? Yeah, um, it's really tough. Yeah, but you know, for these boys doing 50 breaststroke, it's just it's all about the sprint. It's all about you know having that great start. And as you can see here, that we have uh, Ross doing such a great start you know he's there he's going for it oh it's great um, yeah just really good to see them all and you know he, he really worked all the way till the end and uh, and got that Welsh record so he'll be really happy with that swim um, at the moment okay and then we'll have a have a look at Ross's start as well because we mentioned that that was strong and powerful and we're going to be looking at Ross and Adam tonight because of, it was so neck and neck as Joe said uh, in their event last night so we're going to be looking forward to to watching them battle this one out yeah so for the breaststroke because it, it's such a, a 50 sprint you just have to make sure that that start is great and you know that's what Ross is really good at he's really good at nailing his starts but make, maintaining that all the way through towards the finish as well so be really good um, to see how that goes tonight indeed well we move on now to the women's 100 meters freestyle and it is the first of seven heats we're going to see with three Lucy Oxbrow in three, Anna Newlands in four, and Rebecca Danning of Swansea representing in order. Team Ipswich, Cockermouth, and Swansea University. And uh, in terms of age group, we are talking about again, making us feel exceptionally old, the 99 brigade. <laughs> so the uh, 14 going on 15 year olds. Yeah, I'm just glad I'm not soon in there anymore because I'd feel like a grandmaster in next to these. But you know, they've no taken. No one quite like grandma. <laughs> but they've taken out really well down this first 50. To turning in a 27.99, so just breaking that 28 mark. And their best in here is 58.86, so they need to bring that back strong to be able to produce similar times. Well, let's see where they can. And see, racing each other very well here. There's very little to choose between them. They're almost in a, uh, order of uh, 
Not diminishing returns, but very much kind of on pace with each other as they come through for the last 15 metres. Now, is there a last spurt from Lucy Oxbrow to overtake Rebecca Dalling? Not quite. Or has she got it? She has. Yeah, she did. 58.54. She uh, looked like she was just cruising through there in lane number five, and she gets it in 58.54, just winning by 12 100s. Lucy Oxbrow in second and third to Anna Newlands. And that's a PB for Rebecca Dalling. Her PB before that was 59.0, so first time under 59, so that'll be a great sum for her. Good boost for Rebecca Dalling. We have six going to start the second heat. I'll tell you who they are in a moment. Freyna Reyna, Freya Reyna of City of Sunderland in two, Holly Hibbert of Southport in three, Maisie Jameson of Ealing, actually we don't have a lane three, five is Darcy Deakin of City of Sheffield, six Magdalena Saigon of City of Leeds and Bethany Newton of Taunton, Dean in seven, in case you don't know, Maisie Jameson is the daughter of Andy Jameson, our uh, bronze medalist I did not at know that. the 1988 Seoul Olympics. Ah, so it's running in the family then. Maybe we'll have another Olympic medalist uh, in lane number four in uh, maybe 2020, maybe 2024. Well, let's see how she's doing. She's doing pretty well, but not quite as well as Magdalena Sagan of City of Leeds. No, she had a great start, but it is very, very close at the moment. But it is in lane six, she is pulling away, and she's having an amazing last 50. She's looking really strong and pulling away from the rest of the field. 58.60 is her it's best time. Be a great wow, swim. look at this. 57.23. Wow. wow, indeed. That's a huge, great margin that she's taken off her previous personal best. 57.23. Maisie in third place, Andy, by the way. 58.70. And Darcy Deakin in second place, 58.41. So 57.2 is territory she didn't get anywhere near before today. No, great. She had a massive smile as well when she finished, which was good to see. But that was such a strong swim and she looked so powerful down that last 25. They come thick and fast and I would be uh, remiss of me not to say Hazel Ferguson of Woking because the, uh, the Woking posse I know are following our every move and uh, every word. So morning to the uh, Woking lot and indeed to those at City of Salford, Swim Gwynedd, City of Leeds, City of Sheffield, Sedgefield, Chelsea and Westminster and Warrender as well. Katie Matz, Murray Davis, Linda Shaw, Maya Westlake, Hannah Featherston, Georgina Boyle, Catherine Stutt and Hazel Ferguson. That's your one to eight. They've completed 40 metres. How's it looking, Joe? Yeah, Linda Shaw from City of Leeds looks like she's had a good start and also Katie Matz in lane number one. And they've taken out the strong and leading is oh, Hazel Ferguson from Rocking in lane number eight. So, uh, yeah, they're listening to us uh, every single move, so that's a great start for them. But it is very, very close. This is the closest one of the heat so far, and they're literally neck and neck leading down this last 25 metres. This was best time before today, 58-15. She's fading just a little bit as the centre lanes start to show more prominently. Georgina Boyle in six is going well, but going very well in three is Linda Shaw of Leeds, and she and Murray Davis are going to go to the wall together. Murray Davis might just get there first and does. Great finish. 57.63 for Murray Davis. Linda Shaw in second, 57.73, and Maya Westlake in third, 57.96, and for the working posse, 59.20 for Hazel. Sadly, faded away a little bit at the back end, but no fading away for the swimmer in lane number two. And they see the swimmer in lane number three either. Mari Davis, 57.63, Linda Shaw, 57.73. That was a great swim for Mari Davis. She was nowhere with five to go and got it on the touch. She put her head down, and that's what they need to do to get them places. Heat number four. That's your one to eight. I'll tell you the clubs after we get things. Jessica Jackson, no relation? No relation, but rooting for Jessica Jackson. Yeah, very close, yeah. Uh, in one, in two, Erin Navney of Ealing, Chelsea and Westminster, represented by Isabella Hindley in three, Rachel O'Donnell of Carnegie in four, Emma Saunders, City of Manchester Aquatics in five, Elizabeth Hathaway of the Monson Club in six, Victoria Cunningham of Loughborough in seven, and Paul and Fiona Hardy in lane number eight. First 50 is completed, and it is Isabella 
Henley just who leads. Yeah, she's gone out really, really strong. I just hope that she can hold this and she hasn't gone out too hard, but she had a great turn compared to the rest of the field there. And she still is looking really, really strong. But you've got Emma Saunders in lane five, who was great at the Commonwealth Games in, in Delhi in 2010. So, you know, hopefully she's come back to have a great swim here this week. Emma Saunders is starting to come back and coming out very strongly. Three and five should be, could even be uh, one as well. They're all in the mix. Emma Saunders gets it, 57.17 for her. That's a new personal best for Emma Saunders. Second is Isabella Hindley in uh, 57.33. And Jessica Jackson keeping up the uh, Jackson tradition of a bronze medal, 57.52. <laughs> yeah, that was a good swim for Emma Saunders there. You know, she had a great 2010 and faded off a little bit, but she's now out in America training, and it looks like that is starting to help, and she's progressing this year. OK. Here come the names you might recognise, including uh, an Olympian. In lane number five, Sheffield's Rebecca Turner. Lauren Quigley in there too again. She's uh, having a lot of events this week, isn't she? Sophie Smith in three, and Jess Lloyd, our Manchester in four, is the fastest on paper in this field. Yeah, one thing I've noticed this week is all the swimmers are doing different events, and I think that's because it's Commonwealth year. You know, they can start testing out the events and maybe doing a few different ones because, you know, the Commonwealths aren't quite as big as the World's are Olympics, so it's great to see other swimmers doing different events. But it is seeing Harkin turning in a 26.56 from the uni University Sterling. She is having a tremendous week. Really, I mean, she's been doing PBs all over the place, Sean Harkin. And another one, I think, probably on the cards here as well. Rebecca Turner is getting into her slipstream. This is good to see from Becky Turner. She's uh, not had the greatest year. She's not actually had the greatest preparation this year. But Becky Turner is looking very, very good and very determined to get this race. And she's going to do just that. 55.41 for Becky Turner, just outside her personal best that's a good heat swim from her second Jess Lloyd 55.87 and Sean Harkin 56.13 Russ Barber the uh, Sheffield coach has been very happy with the boys not so happy with his girls so far he'll be much more encouraged by that yeah the girls from City of Sheffield had a great 2012 leading into the Olympic Games and last year they didn't produce what you know they their potential of doing because they're great swimmers but you saw Rebecca Turner there have a great last 25 minutes she's so strong down that second half on to heat number six. And uh, you'll recognize a few of these names. Certainly the ones in the center. Amy Smith going in lane number four. The others are Katie Latham of Thanos in one, Rachel Louise Masson of South Aberdeenshire in two, Rebecca Guy, City of Manchester in three, Emma Wilkins, Lafra five, Amelia Moore now with Aqua Sulis in lane six, Shauna Lee of Plymouth in seven, and Lucy Hope in lane eight. There was a lot of hope for Amelia Moore when she came through at a very young age. Is it the time now for her to push on? Yeah, she had a great 200. She's actually now at Bath with David McNulty training there. So they've got a fantastic training program going on and you know she got in the top three for the two to freestyle so hopefully you know she's put the past couple of years behind her because she was the next big thing but hasn't quite produced it yet but you know there's still time she's still very young and she just needs to keep going through those rankings amy smith after not maybe the most impressive 50 freestyle 100 is looking a little bit better coming right back under her shoulder is rebecca guy but this is amy smith's race she's going to take this the question is what kind of time will she get 55.48 not the fastest of the morning uh, Becky Turner still has that in second it's Amelia Morn 56.14 for her that's just outside her personal best and third is Rebecca Guy in 56.19 and there's the confirmation of it yeah, great swim for Amy, 55.4. You know, she'll still have a lot in there. She looked quite comfortable down that last 10 metres. But, you know, we've got Fran Halsall coming in now who's going to want to set a great time for the 100 free this week. She hasn't done 100 free for a while now. She hasn't set a world-class time. And I think this week is the week she needs to do it. Alongside her, the young pretender, possibly. Certainly in other events, anyway. One of us, yeah, never know with the 100 free star. She might be able to show us what she can do here. Remember, she was... Uh, Ostensibly a 200 I am, uh, so a 50 is quite strong on the freestyle, so let's see what uh, Siobhan Marie O'Connor can do in the 100. 
Siobhan is just swimming incredible this week and it's so good to see. You know, I've been on a few teams with her and she's got such a bubbly personality and, you know, I loved being on a team with her. And her 200 freestyle the other night, I got so excited watching the race and she was also part of that 10 by 100, the 100 by 100 relay recently and set an amazing 100 freestyle short cost time. So she could have a great swim tonight. But as we all say, Fran does not like to be beaten at anything, whether it's cards, dominoes or two flies crawling up a wall. Fran Hassel does not like to get beaten and she will not be beaten here by the looks of things. She's uh, giving her all as much as she needs to do in there. Oh, actually, Siobhan's coming right back at her. There's about half a body length between the two, but uh, Fran's got enough in reserve just to uh, get into the wall first in 54.67. That is the uh, sub-55 time of the morning. Siobhan's uh, 55.07 and Grace Verskins in third, 55.6. So uh, job well done, Fran. Of course, they go to uh, semis tonight. She didn't have to go flat out, and she did what she had to do. Fran had a very easy finish there. You could see on a finish, she literally just glided into the wall. So I think she has got a lot more to come. But Siobhan, 55-0, great time for her. And I think she is one to watch for that top four when it's the final tomorrow evening. You know, she's having an amazing week, and she's still got swims to come. But because she's so young, she can do that. She can back swims up, and that's what we're seeing from the younger swimmers this week. New personal best, by the way, for Siobhan, 55-07. So a busy week for Francesca Halsell. You mentioned yeah. that she's been working on her stroke. Yeah, so Fran's uh, changed her stroke. I know that her coach in Loughborough, James Gibson, has been working on making it a little more like a distance stroke. So she's breathing every two on 100, which is pretty much unheard of, unless you get to like the last five meters. So what she's doing is she's trying to keep as much oxygen in her body as she can so that when it gets really hard now towards the end, she has the oxygen that she's taken in from the whole race. And what's exciting about that is that she's done a really great time on breathing every two pretty much the whole way. So tonight, or tomorrow night whenever she goes into the final she's probably going to look to breathe a little less but I think her stroke is doing really well and it's it's almost a stroke that we're going to see later on in the 800 freestyle you know breathing every two kind of keeping it a little longer so it's quite exciting what James is doing with his sprint program uh -huh. and I mean the swimmers from from Loughborough are performing incredibly well yeah. aren't they so that obviously comes down to the coaching as well yeah well they've had a complete change up there you know James Gibson is just trying to, to take what he's learned from all the amazing places that he's been so so um, it's really making a big difference for all of those guys. OK, it is indeed. Well, we move on now to the SB9 Women's 100m breaststroke heats. Four going to start here. Chloe Buck, Harriet Lee, who is the British record holder, Claire Cashmore and Tully Kearney. Tully, one of our exciting young talents. Got uh, Amy Marin. Tully Kearney and quite a few others. The great thing is it's almost like a conveyor belt with our Paralympic swimmers. One lot to retire and a new lot comes straight through. 15, 16, 17 year olds. Very impressive stuff. Now is that British record of Harriet Lee's under threat here this morning. 118.88 is that British record. Let's see whether she can attack it or whether the others can because Tully Kearney, I tell you the way she's been improving in recent times, I wouldn't put it past her to do it. Harriet Lee has had a great start from Peterborough in lane four. She's looking really strong in the red cap, pulling away from the other swimmers. So she just needs to keep that going through the 100 metres. You know, you don't want to over rev 100 breaststroke and tie her too early. So she just needs to keep it nice and smooth and strong. But she's looking really good at the moment. You know, they'll go through to the final tonight. There's only four of them in this heat, so they'll automatically go through. But she still needs to produce a good time because she wants to see how she's swimming this morning. Well, it tends to be that our Paralympic swimmers don't hold a lot of great back in the morning they do tend to want to go for it and see if they can achieve uh, fast times that's what Harriet will be attempting to do here she is on paper three seconds quicker than Claire Cashmore and about seven seconds quicker than Chloe Buck and uh, it's a decent old scrap between Harriet and Claire Cashmore but Harriet is out on top at the moment question is can she get close to that 118 yeah Claire Cashmore's right on Harriet's shoulder and she is pushing it all the way but it does look Harriet Lee is going to take this 100 breaststroke with the final five to go. British record ain't going to go this morning. It may well go later on today. Claire Cashmore was closing with pretty much every stroke there. 121.74, the winning time for Harriet Lee. Claire Cashmore finishing in second, 122.32. And uh, that's probably a bit... Uh, 
bit difficult for Tully Kearney, though she is improving. Not quite as quick as she would have liked at 134, but third place going to Chloe Buck in 124.71. There's the confirmation, 121.74, some three seconds outside her British record for Harriet Lee, Claire Cashmore in second. Yeah, I think Harry will be looking to get that British record tonight. You know, she was three seconds off, but they've got the final. They'll have everyone there cheering them on, and it'll be great to see them going head-to-head. -head. Next up, it's the 200 metres individual medley, so we're going to see a few names back very quickly. Including yeah, Siobhan Siobhan back yeah, yeah, and, and Sophie Allen as well. And uh, that's the starting line for the opening heat. I should mention that we have, at the moment, two in the top six in the world in Siobhan, Marie O'Connor and Amy Wilmot. Yeah, Siobhan is third in the world this year on a 210.35, but we haven't seen Sophie Allen yet this week have her main event, so this is her event, the 200 medley. So she's going to want to put a stamp on the door this morning. She's going to want to have a great swim through to the final tonight because there's no semi-finals for the 200, straight into the final tonight. We are almost ready for the first of the heats of the 200 IM. There will be five in total. This is a, yeah, an intriguing one, because uh, like the 400 IM, which has been strong, 200 IM similarly. There is a Hannah Miley this time round. She's not doing the 400 IM, but she is doing the 200 IM, which is uh, her secondary event, really. Yeah, I think Hannah needs to produce a good 200 medley here. She's going to be racing, hopefully, Sophie Allen, Siobhan at the Commonwealth Games if they get that nomination time, which hopefully they will tonight. But, you know, we didn't see Hannah in the 400. I really wanted to see Hannah race yeah, Amy in the 400. I was really looking forward to that. But, you know, unfortunately, Hannah decided to do some other events this week, but it's still great to see her racing here after the Scottish trials last week. OK, Zara Ryan of Newbury in three, Emma Trotman of Portsmouth in four, and Anna Newland of Cockermouth in five. Uh, new switches on, new watches to our stream here from Glasgow. We'll take you through the different component parts. There's only uh, two actually gone to start here, so we've uh, lost lane five, so just Zara Ryan and Emma Trotman are involved. So first off, butterfly and then what? So they'd start off with the butterfly, which is the stroke I could actually do. <laughs> then they go on to backstroke and breaststroke, the two that I could never, ever do. And then the final 50 is down to the freestyle. But you can see that Zara Ryan has got a great fly stroke. She's looking really strong down this first 50. But with medley, you need to be careful that you don't go out too hard. And I always find that breaststroke's one of the main strokes for the medley swimmer. That's where you see them win and lose the races. And you can see Hannah and Amy have really produced great breaststrokes over this past couple of years. They've tried to improve because that's where, you know, they've been falling back slightly on the world scene and that's where they need to keep going to get them world medals. Is it fair to say if you don't have a good breaststroke there's no point in doing the IM? I wouldn't say there's no point in doing it because obviously if you're still strong with the other three strokes it's good but you know the breaststroke you've seen people win and lose you know I've seen people maybe in seventh position after the backstroke then gone to win a medal it's such a strong component of the medley and the, the breaststroke is probably one of the harder ones to get right so if you've got a great breaststroke you're looking to have a great medley swim. Halfway stage and 106.17 Zara Ryan's time after the backstroke on to the, well, the defining breaststroke, I think. And it may well be defining here for Emma Trotman because she's starting to pull her way through. It's very, very tight between the two of them right alongside each other. And in terms of their entry times, uh, Emma has done a 2.24, uh, 2.23 in fact, and uh, Zara has done a 2.24, so they'll be looking to try and trim that if they possibly can down to the 2.22s, a bit further if at all possible. And they're going to go to the wall virtually together, about a uh, second between Zara Ryan in lane three and Emma Trotman in lane four. Zara's just got the edge at the minute over Emma, but you can see Emma coming back now. She is fighting back. She's picked up that stroke rate. She's kicking her legs harder than what Zara is, so Emma is starting to take this, and she does look like she's going to take this first heat of the 200 medley. Yeah, the legs are kicking hard. She is pulling away what was uh, maybe just a half a body length advantage to become a body length advantage. And uh, hard though Zara is trying to kick in and hold tight and try and keep her in range. She can't. 2.24.39 is the winning time for Emma. Slightly outside her personal best. And second is Zara Ryan in 2.25.46.
Zara just outside her best there, and around 0.3, 0.4 from her best. So not a PB, but it's still a great heat swim. It is hard to get yourself up when there's just two of you in that heat, you know, pushing each other. But we're now on to fuller heats now, so we we'll, should be hopefully producing faster times. Well, we haven't quite got a full one because we haven't got a lane three here. So we've got one, two, four, five, six, seven, and eight, but no Emma Kane. So Megan Morrison of City of Leicester in one, Lauren Stevens, sorry, Laura Stevens of Plymouth in two, Chloe Hanneman of City of Peterborough in four, Constance Dean of Maidenhead in five, Tane Bruce of Carnegie in six, Elizabeth Hopkins of Portsmouth in seven, and Chloe Golding of Ellesmere in lane number eight. We've already seen a few of these swimmers here this morning, Chloe Hanneman from the City of Peterborough, we've actually already seen her race, so, you know, hopefully they've gone away, they've sw swam down from their swap swim and they've recovered and they're ready to go again because it is a tough program for some of these girls here they're racing back to back which is really hard to do these are still young so they are capable of doing it but we've seen some of the older girls and guys swimming back to back and it does take it out of you city of leicester plymouth city of peterborough maidenhead carnegie portsmouth and ellesmere being represented in this one at the moment at the front of the field it's constance dean of maidenhead she's looking very good on the backstroke and is opening up a little bit of a lead not a big one though and uh, as i say that just coming back onto her slipstream is chloe hannam of city of peterborough in lane number four they are one and two at the turn because now we're onto the breaststroke and this is where things can change an awful lot at the moment. Nothing is changing at the front though because Constance Dean is holding on to her lead. Constance Dean had a great backstroke split there. She looked really strong and smooth on that second 50. She needs to keep that pace going now. She is still looking really strong and she's pulling away from the other swimmer. So her breaststroke is one of her strongest strokes. You can see her pulling away and she's looking really well coming into that final 50. 2.20.28 is her best time prior to today. She'll be looking to improve upon that and uh, the way she's looking, the way she's dominating this race, she's on course to do that. 145.97 for Constance at the last turn. Megan Morrison, 148.28. And third place is Chloe Hannam. So what kind of time now? It's not a question of whether she's going to win this race or not, but what kind of time? Because look at the margin between her and the rest of the moment. Yeah, and you've got Megan over in lane one as well from City of Leicester, who, you know, hasn't quite caught her up, but she's still having a strong swim from this outside lane, and she's hopefully going to get that second position. And this should be a good time for Megan as well. Now, Constance, can you go sub 2.20 for the first time? She can. 2.19.78. That's a, a massive improvement for her. Megan Morrison in second place in lane one, 2.22.75. And Chloe Hannam of City of Peterborough in third place. So, yeah, 2.19. That's a good breakthrough in terms of time and the big smile to match. Yeah, big smile on her face there, so she's really happy with that swim. But to go with 219, that is a really good swim for her, breaking the 220 mark, and you can see that she was really happy with that performance. Second of five heats of the 200 IM. Now, Amy Wilmot finds herself in the first of the cyclically seeded heats alongside Sophie Smith. This will be interesting. Wilmot and Smith going head to head. Remember, it's top eight times, so they can't hang around. Amy Wilmot currently ranked sixth in the world with a 2.10.87. Now, how is she going to attack? So we don't have a lane two, by the way. We've uh, lost the swimmer in lane two. That's uh, Aaron Nabney, but everybody else present and correct. Yeah, we've got Amy going here. We saw her in the 400 medley get that nomination time for the 400 for the English team. But speaking to Amy after that, she wasn't actually that happy with her time. She'd hoped that she'd have gone quicker. She's been struggling a little bit with a bad back recently, so maybe that's affected her slightly. But she needs to get in there. That 200 medley nomination time is a tough time, so they need to be able to, you know, do fast on all of these four lengths. But we've also seen so Mo Sophie Smith swing really well. She's now with Kev Renshaw in Loughborough, and she's got a great, great training program and been training really well. Sure, Kev will be watching in this morning, seeing how his charge does and how she charges through the field, if indeed she can, because uh, Amy will be keeping her very closely guarded and closely watched. And Sophie Smith at the halfway stage is just behind Amy Wilmot. 103.03, the turning time at halfway for Amy Wilmot. 103.89 for Sophie Smith and Alice Tennant in third place. Now, the respective breaststrokes, what's going to happen? 
couple with these. We saw Amy dominate the 400 medley on that breaststroke. She has been working over the past year on her breaststroke to improve her medley, so we are seeing her starting to pull away from Sophie Smith. And I've seen Amy do 400 freestyles, 800 freestyles as well, so we know that she's got a strong back end to her medley swimming. Looking good in the morning, as indeed it has to, because uh, she wants to progress to the final and only eight can. This is a, a very dominant performance now, certainly after the breaststroke from Amy Wilmot. That uh, advantage has become 2.47 seconds over Sophie Smith with Alice Tennant holding on to third place. Yeah, that was a great 50 for Amy. Her breaststroke's looking so strong at the minute, and that's what she needs when she goes uh, along with Hannah, who's another great breaststroke. She needs to have that strong breaststroke, but she's looking smooth at the moment. She doesn't look like she's putting 100% into this heat she look she's looking nice and easy her stroke rate isn't too high so hopefully she's saving a little bit of energy for that final tonight looking at about a 214 here possibly maybe a 215 from amy a 215 23 for her very, very comfortable, it looked to be anyway. Second place, Sophie Smith, 216-70. Alice Tennant, 218-85. There are two more heats to come. And the likes of Siobhan, Marie O'Connor and Sophie Allen still in the mix. Here are those times. Amy will go considerably quicker in the final tonight, 2.15.23, and seem to have an awful lot in reserve there. Yeah, she looked really easy down that last 20 minutes metre. She just looked like she backed off a little bit, her stroke rate slowed down. You know, she might have had that talk with the coach that, you know, just to back off if you're in ahead a lot, in which she did. So hopefully she's got a lot more in reserve in the tank for tonight. Siobhan returns. Siobhan Marie O'Connor in lane number four. Ranked third in the world at the moment. Uh, Alicia Coote has a rapid time. Well, that's to put it mildly, 208.89. And then uh, Femke Hemskirk of the Netherlands, 210.21. Then comes Siobhan, who is now 18 years of age. We saw her at 15 when she was at the World Championships. Yeah, still very, very young, 18 years old. But I still see her as a 15-year-old when I see her, you know, walking around poolside. She still looks so young, but she's such a lovely girl. You know, you always see her smiling. You always see her happy. And you know, she's such a positive girl. Speaking to her after the tournament freestyle, she couldn't believe how well she'd swam. She was kind of all in a blur and all in a flurry that she'd gone so fast. And she's just had a great year speaking to David. Her training has been really, really strong this past year. And he said her weight work, her strength work has really come on as well, which is great to see. And she's looking really strong at the moment. 28-4-1, it was at the first turn after the butterfly. On to the backstroke halfway. Look already, she's got a big lead over Danielle Lowe in five and Ellis Jackson in three, as we would expect. On to the breaststroke, and that is something that really has been improving. But there's some other good breaststrokers in this IM, and in fact, we're seeing Danielle Lowe on the breaststroke. She's starting to pull back a bit on Siobhan here. We saw Danielle Lowe in the 200 breaststroke, and she had a great swim there. We also saw her in the 400 medley. So she's a medley breaststroke specialist, but Siobhan has got a great 100 breaststroke. She was a part of the 4 by one head medley relay at the Olympic Games and did a great split in that relay. So we know that her breaststroke is really strong. She just needs to put that together as an all-four stroke. 2.10.35 is her personal best. That's the time she set earlier on this year in Berlin at the split, 1.41.07. Still a lead, but not as sizable a lead over Danielle Lowe in second. And as Jackson has now moved up into third as we go on to the front crawl. I don't think they're going to be anywhere near that 2.10 this morning, turning in a 1.41.0. I think you're looking at kind of 2.13, 2.14 again. But she is looking really, really comfortable. She is even pulling away from the other girls, but she looks smooth. We saw on the 200 have a really strong and high stroke rate, and she doesn't look like that at the minute. So we think we've still got a lot to see from Siobhan. Yeah, plenty more from her. 2.13.76 gets the job done, though, for the morning, as far as she is concerned. Fastest time that we have seen. Second going to Daniel Lowe in 2.15.19 and third place to Ellis Jackson, 2.16.75. She doesn't look too out of breath either. No, which is she good. doesn't. <laughs> it's another morning in the pool, comfortably yeah. achieved. And uh, that, that baby face, the baby face assassin, Siobhan Marie O'Connor, attacking the water in the morning. She'll be attacking it even more tonight. Sophie Allen going in this, Hannah Miley going in this in lanes four and five. Hannah Holder of the Scottish record in the 200 IM. Sophie Allen in lane number four is a real one to watch. 
She's been producing some very, very fast starts. Certainly in uh, 2013 she did, because she pushed on in 2014. Yeah, she's had a great couple of years, and Sophie's actually Siobhan's training partner. So coming into this meet, they'll have been training together, they'll have tapered together for the meet, so they'll know how each of them swimming. So it puts a little bit of pressure on each of them that they know what they've been doing. They've been racing against each other. But, you know, Sophie needs to have a good swim here. This is her main event. This is the one that she loves to do. This is the one that she would love to get, you know, the Commonwealth medal, Olympic medal in. So if she can produce a strong heat swim this morning, it'll give her a lot of confidence going into that final tonight. Looking very strong so far. She's got some uh, big hitters in here. She's got Emma Day in lane three, but she's also got Hannah Miley, who has uh, done this event many times at world and Olympic level. So she's a very good marker to have alongside for Sophie to know how she's going. 28.76 it was at the first 50. But, ooh, a bit of a glide in for Sophie yeah. on that one. 103.47. She's lost the lead to Hannah on that turn as well. Yeah, Hannah's turn there was great. That's one thing Hannah never, ever gets wrong. Her starts, her turns. Everything is perfection with Hannah. You know, she practices it in training every single day, every session. Everything is perfect. And you can see that when she races, she never, ever makes a mistake, which doesn't happen very often. Well, Hannah's just taken over the lead. There's not much, though, between these two are virtually head-to-head. -head. You can just see the white cap bouncing up and down a little bit in advance of Sophie Allen. And what was a slight lead has become a bigger lead for Hannah Miley with 50 to go. And she's very strong on the freestyle. We know that. She's good on the front crawl. And she has a lead of about half a second, just over half a second over Sophie Allen at the last 50 split. Hannah's looking great. You know, the first 100, she looked quite comfortable. And, you know, she's still looking really, really smooth and easy here. But she's pulling away from the rest of the field. And she's going to set a great time here this morning. This is going to be a really good heat swim for Hannah. But, you know, Hannah never does a slow swim. No. She always gives it 100% every time she gets in. It's like a clockwork toy. You <laughs> wind her up and off she goes. And she's going to do a 2.12 here. 2.12, 62 for Hannah Miley. Fastest time of the morning. Sophie Allen, 2.16.19, faded a little bit there. Hopefully she's done enough to get to the final because that's quite tight. Third place, Georgia Coates. We need to wait until the board revolves in a moment to tell you. Let's just watch Hannah finishing off here. Yeah, Hannah just looked amazing down that last 10 metres. She just kept going and going. She's like a wind-up doll. She never, ever stops. And, you know, that was a really strong performance for, for her. But they don't have semi-finals for the 200s. And the girls do need to be careful with that. that they don't go too easy in that heat and miss the final because if they're not in that final then you know they haven't got a hope of going to the commonwealth game so hopefully sophie has done enough because it'll be a real shame if she hasn't made it through much tighter than she would like she has made it through in fifth place Georgia Coates, Ellis Jackson also making it through in the last two places, but a bit too close for comfort for her liking. I'm sure she'll step it up when we see the final later on today. So we didn't see her in the 400 IM, but Hannah Miley, again, the name is back. Does that girl ever stop? <laughs> Not really. I'm really pleased, actually, that Hannah had a great swim there. She, um, It's just really nice for her to come here to do the sprint event because, you know, Siobhan Marie O'Connor and Sophie Allen have both kind of done a little better than her in that 200 for you know about the last year I'd say so really good that she's come here and she's put in a great time this morning she has indeed now coming up later on this morning we have the 800 meters freestyle yes really looking forward to seeing that event yeah well Hannah actually did the end of freestyle last week and she's qualified now for for the Scottish team for the Commonwealth Games so it'll be really interesting this morning um, to see how the rest of the guys do you know there's that English uh, nomination time which is quite a hard one so it's going to be quite exciting to see those girls have a really good heat because they'll want to make sure they blow any cobwebs out of their system. We've got some young girls coming up. Danielle Huskisson, she had a great swim last week in the heats um, at the Scottish National. She couldn't swim in the final because she was English. So I think we've got a lot to look forward to um, yeah. in that 800. And in terms of tactics then, how, how are they going to pace themselves for an 800? It's quite a weird one, uh, really, but you, you want to make sure that the middle of the race is, is where you're trying to make all of your gains. So that's when everybody tends to sit back a little bit or they're a little bit tired or they're not thinking about that. So you've got to constantly make sure that that middle section of the race is the best part of the race for you. Indeed. OK, well, we move on now to the men's 100 metres butterfly heats. And the lineup for the opening heat contains just three and that is Thomas Gibbs 
of Bolton Metro, Perry Gardner of Middlesbrough, and Jake Tyson of Team Ipswich. So this is uh, not quite the splash and dash of the butterfly. This is a slightly easier version. And uh, Steve Parry would always say to James Hickman the other day, it's the easy one. I do the tough one. You do the easy one. I know there's always a bit of banter between the middle distance swimmers and the sprinters. The sprinters say that their event's harder. The middle distance say that they're hard. But I was a middle distance slash distance swimmer, so I'll stick up for the distance swimmers and say that, that that's a harder event. Absolutely right. Of course you're right. <laughs> Uh, Thomas Gibbs, the 26-3-4 at the split. Just having a look down the world list here. We don't have any Brits up in the uh, top echelon. We'd like to see that change today. Not going to change with the, the youngsters. All they're trying to do is get into the junior final later on today and set personal best. They're all in the 57 range. In fact, there's three 100 separates these three in terms of their entry time. And it's going to be a very close finish as well. It does look like Jake Tyson might just get it on the touch, but he needs to finish strong, and he does in a 56.53, so good finish for him. And then silver, 56.93 with Thomas Gibbs, and in third, Perry Garden, 57.09. Yeah, the champion will be very happy with that. Jake Tyson has taken about three quarters of a second off his personal best. Two clock a time, 56.53. First time he's been in the 56s, and that also applies to Thomas Gibbs in second place. Some names in this one. <laughs> they won Sekondi Kinnersley. Aroshenko in two, Carl Chisholm in three, Luke Greenbank four, Kevin Warbank in five, Barton Townley six, and Ben Kerry of City of Salford in seven. No lane eight. And the fastest entry time in this field comes from Luke Greenbank, who's got a 56-1-4. So as we were looking for the others to go into the 56s, we we're looking for this bunch to go into the 55s. Yeah, and Luke Greenbank had a great start there from Cockermouth. You saw him come up quite ahead in front of the others, but, you know, he has got the other guys around him, and it is going to be a close to this first 50 with the first two. Lanes four and five go to the wall together. Kevin Wallbank gets there just first, 25-8-1. Leading by 12 one hundredths of a second from Luke Greenbank, 25.93. And third is Ben Carey, 26.15. Yeah, Luke, Luke Greenbank is coming back. You can see his start and turn were incredible compared to the rest of the field. He was winning for the start and then the turn, but, you know, he has got a close race behind him. He has got Kevin Warbank coming back on his shoulder as well, so it's going to be down to the finish. Looks like the man from Cockermouth will get there first and does. 55.55. So, yeah, he's into the 55s for the very first time as indeed is Kevin Wallbank only 11 100 separated them at the finish good times both 55 5, 5 for Luke Greenbank and 55 6, 6 for Kevin Wallbank both into uncharted territory sub 56 55 is a great time for these boys both with personal best there and it was on the finish which was great to see so that the fastest two swims of the heats this morning Moving on to the like Sam Straw and Adam Taylor going in the next heat of the 100 Butterfly. Representatives from Sheffield, Warrender, Beckenham, City of Sunderland, Loughborough, City of Leicester, Millfield and Loughborough once again in lane number eight, heat number three of the 100 Butterfly. And the fastest on paper in this field is Adam Taylor of City of Sunderland, who's done a 55-6 before now. And Sam Strong had a good start there. He came up first at the 15 mark, but it is neck and neck going down this first 15. That's what you'll see over the 100 fly. It will be very close down the first 50, and you'll see the strongest swimmers coming through on that final 25 metres. Ben Lowe in lane seven had a really good start. 25-1-8 for the Millfield swimmer. Going very, very well. In second place, Adam Fall. And third is Jamie Thorpe. But this race is going to change complexion again. But not, probably not with Ben Lowe, because Ben Lowe's attacking this very, very strongly. Sam Strawn starting to come back into the mix. Yeah, Ben's having a great swim. So, and so is lane eight, Adam Fowl. He's looking really strong. And he looks like he's going to be in the mix as well for this top two. So it's going to be the outside lanes that do take this uh, third heat. Ben Lowe's best time before today was 55.82. He stops the clock at 55.39 so that is a big substantial improvement for him in terms of his personal best time good win for him second place to Sean Campsey and third place to uh, sorry second place to Adam Fall and third place to Luke Buxton so 55.39 winning time and a big smile because he's just appreciated what he's done
Heat number four of the men's 100 metres butterfly, including one of our Olympians in lane number four, Anthony James, who did this event in London 2012. No lane one, no Jamie Graham from City of Glasgow, everybody else in place. Anthony had a really disappointing year last year. He swam really well to get to the Olympic Games, but, you know, he missed the world's team last year, and I know he's missed a lot of training this year through shoulder injury. So, you know, I don't know how Anthony's going to swim here. I hope he can produce a good swim. His 50 wasn't great the other night when he did the 50 fly, so, you know, he needs to be able to get out nice and strong, but hold on down that last 50. Shoulder problems for a butterfly swimmer are about the worst thing you could possibly have, because you have to use your shoulders so much and project yourself forward. Yeah, there's been so many world-class butterflies fly swimmers that have had to retire or finish swimming through shoulder injury so hopefully Anthony has kind of got that under control at the minute and he can race for the rest of the season. Looking okay here, not out on his own though, Ryan Bennett's trying to flank him one side and Harry Needs on the other side but it is just Anthony James so it's only going to be just though, not by a great margin, he's going to get to the wall before three others who are pursuing him, it is Anthony James in 54.11, that's okay. Not uh, down the 52s where he has been, but he doesn't need that this morning because there is a semi final to come later on for him, as indeed there should be for Ryan Bennett. 54.30, and uh, Harry needs the uh, future. Rebecca Adlington Bow. Well, she, he already is, but obviously they're going to be walking down the aisle at some yeah, point. Yeah, getting married this year. Rebecca's here cheering on Harry, which is great to see. And I think he'll be really happy with that speaking to him this morning. You know, he wanted to go around the 54 mark, so, you know, hopefully that'll get him a second swim tonight. Just outside his personal best. Now, let's see what uh, Yain Lloyd can do in the 100 fly. Really want him to get back to the kind of form we saw from him a couple of years ago. This is not his best event, but he's really a freestyler mainly, but um, yeah, we can go at the 100 butterfly here. Adam Barrett of Loughborough is improving in leaps and bounds. Let's see whether he can improve again with his heat swim in heat number five. He goes in lane number four. Braxton Tim of Sheffield is in five. Sam Horrocks of Manchester in three. And the Iron Lord say normally known as a freestyler at 200 and 400 going in the 100 fly here. Adam's another one that's in the sprint squad with James Gibson at Loughborough. They've recently just moved over from the Loughborough squad, so the university, the trainer. He was over that he was racing with them in 2012, but recently gone to James Gibson, so hopefully that's helped his training. I know he's been training incredibly well and come from nowhere this past couple of years, so it'll be great to see him have a great swim today. 52.56 is his best time. Alongside him in lane number five, it's Sheffield's Braxton Tim, who's really giving a good race here. It's Braxton, good stuff from the uh, Sheffield boy, because Adam is finding this hard to win. Now, is it going to be Braxton Tim, or is it going to be Adam Barrett who gets to the wall first? Not much between them, just Adam Barrett. <laughs> On the finish. <laughs> Eight one hundredths of a second in the end. 53.71 for Braxton Tim, uh, for Adam Barrett, rather. And Braxton with a 53.79, so that should be good enough to make it through to the semi-finals with Sam Horrocks in third, 54-19. That's a good bit of racing there. Yeah, we can see it all was down to the finish. One of them glided, one of them did an extra stroke, and we could see that Adam Barrett did take that because of the finish. But we can see the results there. Adam Barrett, we're going to 53-7-1, and Braxton Tim, 53-7-9. So good swims for both of them, boys. Two more heats. Sorry, one more heat to come of the 100 butterfly. James Guy returns. I thought, he, I thought he was done for the week, but now he's going to have a go at the 100 fly here. Yeah, I did see him uh, training this one. I thought, I thought you were done. It's interesting. I've never seen him do fly before, so I'm looking forward to seeing how he gets on. Yeah, OK. Well, uh, he could shock us all. Yes, he could. Shock himself. What's his uh, entry time? 53.88. Hmm. Well, I think that's probably under threat. Ryan Flanagan of City of Sheffield and one Michael Gunning, who we saw swim so very well yesterday. Not quite so well in the final, but did it early in the day in lane two. Thomas Laxton in four. Joe Roebuck back in five. Did the 200 fly last night. Mark Zaranek in six. Daniel Scott in seven. And Duncan Scott in eight. So what's happening in the centre of the pool there, Joe? Yeah, you can see that Tom Laxton has taken it out really well over the first 50, but so is Joseph Roebuck. You know, I spoke to Joe this morning after the 200 last night, and he said he had a lot of easy speed. So I've been 
really looking forward to seeing how he gets on. And you can see Joe's turns are amazing. You know, he takes the rest of the field and he does look like he's swimming really well at the moment and is winning the half with 25 metres to go. But don't count off Tom Laxton as well. Or oh, James Guy, for that matter, in lane number three, who's going to oh, win this. James Guy's going to win this. You wait and see. This is going to be the big upset of the morning. James Guy's going to win this. <laughs> Good swing. No, he didn't actually. Joe oh. Roebuck got the touch. 53.94 compared to 54.00. So James Guy just outside his personal best. I think I don't quite happen on the finish there. We need to look at this. How did he not win that? He, he did was... look like he was going to get that. Did he just miss the finish slightly? Yeah, I think they literally touched together. But it still looks like James Guy did get that on the touch. But you know, the results, the results, and Joe definitely got that in a 53.94. So Joe makes it through, James makes it through, Tom Laxton makes it through, let's have a look, who misses out? Well, Ben, ben Lowe gets in, Yain Loy gets in as well in the last two places for the semi-finals tonight of the 100 Butterfly. Well, that's a perfect example of a great finish. <laughs> yes. Anyone can take it, the finish. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And we saw it in the 100 fly, you know, with Rachel Kelly just pipping the girls, Fran Halsall, out of that. Um, Joe definitely took that because he's got the longer arms. Joe's got really long arms, so he really took that out. But, you know, James Guy had a terrible finish. He almost kissed the wall. And he had a little sneaky look there. So if he hadn't had that sneaky look and hadn't tried to kiss the wall, I think he probably would have won that and gone a 53 point. Because that just didn't look at all like a comfortable finish did it no no not at all <laughs> it didn't <laughs> look like he timed it well at all but you know he's young and he just wanted to see what he could do in that race and had a little look to the side which is always a no-no um when yeah, you're, you're new doing butterfly yeah you don't want to look at anybody else just concentrate on yourself and would you put that down to the whole race of his stroke count or not um, he probably, because he's predominantly a freestyler, he probably wouldn't have been counting his strokes for butterfly. I, I doubt that's something that he would do. Yeah, indeed. Now, still more, more racing to come. The women's 100 breaststroke is coming up next. However, women's 800 metres is coming up as well, which, yes. Kerry ann you're going to do some commentating yes. on. I'm really excited about that. Because this is obviously your forte. <laughs> you know, what are these girls, in terms of tactics, what are they going to be thinking before this race? Well, the tactics are going to be about the middle part of the race for them. I think that's going to be where they're going to have to do it. OK, well, we'll move on to the women's 100 breaststroke and have a chat about that later. Do you know what? For the first time, I'm getting excited about women's breaststroking. It's been a while because, well, I say, she has probably about 10 years, I suppose, because uh, suddenly we've got a few potentially world-class women's breaststrokers, which we've not had in a long, long time. It's about time we've moved it on. It moved on to 200. Can they move on in the 100, Joe? I hope so. We've got Sophie Taylor coming up um, towards the end of the 100 breaststroke heats. And I got so excited in that 200 breaststroke last night. I got goosebumps. And it was the first time that I was like, wow, that we've got an amazing swimmer here. She looked strong. She looked great down that last 25. And we thought that she was going to die slightly because she went out so strong, but she didn't. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how she did because she had so much speed down that first 100. She could produce something very exciting there. If she can get down to the 106 mark here, that's top five in the world this year which would be a great swim for her Jade Stocker in two, Charlotte Holmes in three for Sheffield, Leicester's Megan Morrison in four, Lydia Lavalin of Taunton Dean in five, in six it's Emma Chittleberg of Warrender and Sarah Tripp of Rushmore in lane number seven and at the moment it looks like the centre lane, lane number four with Megan Morrison just in front, there's four in the line here, call this one Joe began. Yeah I'm going to go for lane number six, she's looking really good at the moment, she's coming back but it is going to be really really close. They've had a really close race for the whole of this, but I still think lane number six called it well. You called it. <laughs> yeah. You called it. 113.5. So, you know, good heat swim for her this morning. PB, so that's really, really good strong swim. Yeah, good finish for Emma Chittleberg of Warren de Bath. Second to Megan Morrison. And third place to Sarah Tripp. This results now being displayed for number one. We will have in total in the women's 100 breaststroke five heats. Here's the lineup for heat number two. Norwich, Davencio, Edinburgh, Grantham, Crawley, Tymouth, Bridge and City, Aquasulis. Yes, I could get a job as a trained announcer. You're quite right. That's your 128 in the second heat. 
Yeah, we've seen Lane One go out really strongly. I'll let you pronounce that name there, because I've already pronounced well, uh, it wrong. Marzellini. Marzellini, there we go. But she's got out really strong at the start of this 100 breaststroke. We know we've seen a lot of the outside lanes swim really well here, and it's great to see that because we've seen the likes of Rebecca Addington win Olympic and medals from all different lanes. So, you know, it doesn't matter what lane you're in in that pool. Go to lane, you got a chance. Exactly. As they always say. Rachel Helm, 33.87 at the turn. Second place going to Abby Wood. Sorry, Federica Williamson had second place there. And third to Bethan Sloan of Bridge End City. But now we are concentrating on the, well, same centre lanes, but lane seven still going very strong is Bethan Sloan. Lane five, Federica Williamson, too, just coming to the front of the field. And it's between five and seven at the moment. Although down below is lane two, Abby Wood has suddenly got a bit of a march on, and she's going to take this. It's going to be lane two that's going to yeah. get it. Abby Wood of DaVencio will finish in first place. 112.47 for Abby Wood. Second is Bethan Sloan, and third, Federica Williamson. So how does that compare with Abby Wood's previous time? 112.62 she was before. Well, she's better than that now. 112.47. Good to know for Abby Wood this morning. They will have the junior final tonight, so they're fighting out for the top eight positions for that junior final. These will have the European juniors this year, so they'll be fine to out for those places. Fastest this morning, so far, 112.47. Heat three of the women's 100 metres breaststroke. And Molly Renshaw is back. Sophie Allen back too, in four and five. Yeah, Sophie's just done the 200 medley, so it'll be great to see how she's recovered from that event. Hasn't had long, probably about 10 minutes, if that. It's a very quick turnaround for Sophie in lane four. Molly finishing second, Yessi behind Sophie Taylor in that uh, dramatic 200 breaststroke, both doing very, very good times. Molly having her English record taken away from her, though. Yeah, I really felt for Molly last night. We saw her on the podium, um, look really upset of how she did, because she always seems to just miss them nomination times. And, you know, she's such a great swimmer, and I think she just needs that great swim at these competitions to get that time. She seems to swim really well leading into it, and whether she lets the pressure get to her slightly, but she just always oh, yeah, seems yeah, to yeah, miss yeah, out, and I did yeah. feel for her last night. Beth Aitchison's had a decent start in lane number seven, but not as good as Sarah Vesey, who is leading for DaVencio at the first turn. At the only turn, of course, in the 100 breaststroke. Second place is Rachel Wilson and third, Molly Renshaw at the 50. And also, if we look at over lane seven, Beth, she looks like she's coming strong, back strong as well, so it's going to be down to the finish. You know, she seems to be pulling away, but Molly's also looking strong with a 15 to go. Molly Renshaw's best time is 1.09.44. Sophie's done a 107, but it's going to be Molly who's going to get there first on this one. Time of 1.09.94. So it's about half a second outside her personal best, but a good solid heat swim from her. Sophie Allen, 1.010.84 in second and third is Beth Aitchison in 1.10.89. That's a good heat swim for Holly there. Really strong. First one under 110. We've still got two two heats to go we've got Sophie Taylor coming up next but you know Molly should be happy with that it was a strong performance for her I should point out that when we get to the final heat uh, Ruta Melitite who is the Olympic champion is going to go faster than everybody else we know that but she cannot compete in the final she can do the semi-finals but she can't do the final yeah so she's going to go for it in the heat we see her every time swimming great heat semis and finals but you know she can't swim the final so she'll want to produce a great swim in the heat and the semi uh, here's our new stylist of breaststroke swimming, Sophie Taylor. Going for City of Leeds in four. Emma Kane, Millfield in one. Cara Hanlon of Highland in two. Corey Scott, Edinburgh three. Daniel Lowe's back again for more in five. For City of Derby, City of Salford's Katie Matz in six. Avril Kiroshenko of Swansea in seven. Imogen Clark in lane eight. Okay, Sophie Taylor, can you back up that 200 with a great 100 swim? Yeah, we've seen a lot of the medley girls backing up now going into 100 breaststrokes. So you can see that they're working on their breaststroke to help their IM. But Sophie Taylor, you just look. She looks smooth, she's looking comfortable at the moment, but it is a great turn for her, turning in 32.64. Really strong first, 50, but she looks smooth, she looks easy, and it's, it, she's a really exciting prospect for our future of swimming. I, I'm getting very excited about that, because the same breaststroke has certainly, where the women's been concerned, been a rather barren field recently, but she's getting a lot of pressure here from Corrie Scott. A great swim by Corrie Scott, who's suddenly come through in lane three. Yeah, Corrie's looking really good. You know, she's one of the Scottish swimmers 
swimmers that's swimming really well at the moment was at Scottish Trials last week and swam really well. So, you know, it's great to see them having a tussle in this heat this morning, trying to get that touch. Can she get a personal best? She can. Can Corey Scott in 1.09.72, 1.09.58 for Sophie Taylor. That's not a personal best, but for Corey Scott it is in second place. Danielle Lowe finishing in third, but Sophie Taylor getting the job done at the end and winning that in 69.58. These girls will get through to the semi-finals tonight, getting top three in these heats. So, you know, they don't have to give it 100%. They have got the semi-finals. They need to reserve that little bit of energy. And then it's going to be a great semi-final and final for this women's 100 breaststroke. And I think it's one of the first times in a lot of years where it's going to be a close race. Not this one, though. <laughs> no, this is, this is going to be a good one. Ruta Meliotite, 104.35. That's a different ballpark to everybody else. The Olympic champion in lane four. Let's just show you how it's. Look at that start. Oh, that look start. at that start. So powerful. It's, she's just in a world of her own. I've never seen anything like it. You watch her swim. She's different to all the other swimmers. She looks strong in the water. She's gliding at 64 3, her world record. It's, it's a guy's 100 breaststroke time. She's just phenomenal. It's, she's just a world class swimmer. It's like she comes off a pogo stick. When she comes off that block, she kind of just projects herself into the water. She doesn't jump into the water or dive into the water. She leaps into the the water. I've never seen a start like it and she's just turned in 30.8 which is a great first 50 but she took loads of space off the rest of the swimmers you know she was five meters in front of some of it it was just ridiculous I've never seen starts and turns like her and just look at her she just looks amazing when she's swimming. The others are looking and thinking am I swimming slowly this morning or what you can see this woman disappearing into the distance I can barely see her now because she's got one two three four five body lengths advantage maybe over the rest. The nearest to her is Georgina Evans, who's not swimming slowly, yeah, let me tell still you. still swimming well. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a 105.63. That's ridiculous, Ruta. That's a that's great ridiculous. heat swim. That is super quick for a heat swim. And Georgia Evans in second, getting a 109.5. It's still a good heat swim. It's not a bad heat swim for her. But, you know, put her in that race next to Ruta. They're just so far behind. But it's still a great swim. And we've got to remember she's not British. But look at that star. You know, she's strong underwater, streamlined. And she gets up onto the water and gets going straight away and she took the field by storm she was just amazing and that finish she doesn't tire on the finish at all you see some breaststrokers tie up in that last 10 meters not Ruta she just keeps going to the wall and do you know what she wasn't very happy with that finish she, there was a bit of a glide there and she's I think she was quite annoyed yeah, with she herself doesn't she doesn't have didn't... a smile on her face yet <laughs> so we might see one tonight hopefully well that time should make a smile 105.63 she has blitzed that field Georgina Evans in second Katie Armitage in third I'm in awe as to what she does and if she gets better she's going to take this event to another level yeah and it's the fastest time in the world this year do you know before that it was a 106.1 so she's just produced a heat swim that is the world fastest time and she's still not 100% happy with it so you know there's still ways that she can improve on things like that but a world class athlete and it's just a pleasure to watch a swimmer swim that fast Rika Mullerperson your number one ranking has just disappeared <laughs> it was smashed actually <laughs> Smashed indeed. Four seconds ahead of the field. What a start. I haven't seen a start like that in a long time. No, absolutely incredible. She just, this is what we need to see though. We need to see our girls doing starts. Like they're like just, a pogo stick is right, I must admit. <laughs> what, just an incredible start. And by the first sort of 15 meters, she was just so far ahead of everybody. And this is what we need our breaststroke girls to be looking at and to be doing, watching Ruta do fantastic starts like that and turns. And what is it about her stroke, Kerry? It's just, she just has a really good timing, so the timing of everything that she does is fantastic. So it just works really well and she doesn't stop going the whole way. Okay, well it's time now for the 800 metres freestyle. Mm. Looking forward to this one, it's over to Joe and Bob. And we'll also hear you commentating on this one as well, Kerry ann <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to be a part-time commentator here. I'm going to do a couple of these, and then uh, Carrie Ann's going to come in and show me how it's done. The two girls are all in at this hour I know, for the 800 freestyle. This girl power stuff. I don't know. I thought we got rid of the Spice Girls, but obviously we're not. We've got a new version of me them. Me and Carrie Ann are the new Spice Girls. <laughs> Which one would you be? Uh, mm, ginger Spice, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> or Sporty Spice. I thought you'd be Sporty, yeah. yeah or should thought... Carrie Ann be Sporty Spice? Yeah, we have to work out what Carrie Ann is. I'll ask her when she comes <laughs> up. <laughs>
All right, on to the first heat of the women's 800 freestyle. So 16 lengths of this ball. Georgia Wright of Doncaster Darts in one. Jennifer King of Escher in two. Stop talking to me, producer, while I'm trying to give the start of this. Uh, three, Lucy Ellis of City of Sunderland at three. Isabel Griffiths of City of Birmingham in four. Amber Keegan of Nova Centurion in five. Katie Reynolds of Burnley in six. In the giggles now. Emily Graham of Plymouth in seven. You take over, I'll just have a laugh. I'm laughing just as much, I think. We need to start laughing. We, shouldn't, we need to stop talking about the Spice Girls. But, you know... <laughs> There we go. I'm being told I need to be posh spice. I'm, I don't know if I'm posh enough to be posh spice yet. I've never had you down as posh. I've got to be honest, Joe. Kerry Ann can be posh spice. She's posh yeah, she than can. me. That's true. Right, where are we now? Yeah, let's get back to the swimming. <laughs> 100 metres gone and leading at the second phase of this race, Lucy Ellis, 102.44 and Amber Keegan in second in 102.76. It's great to see, you know, I, I did like an 800. I didn't do them very often, but I really enjoyed swimming them. And everyone swims them so different. You saw Rebecca Adlington when she would do the 800. She would bring it back so strong. She'd take it out nice and comfortable. But then you see other 800 swimmers take it out really Really strong from the start so it'll be interesting to see how these girls do this but you know they need to keep repeating the splits over the 50 if they want to swim a fast time but you know 800s on the morning are a really hard swim to do so they just need to keep their stroke rate up they need to keep kicking constantly and to get that nice time top times in the world jessica ashwood for australia new name for a lot of people 21 year old 81976 then uh, maria belmonte has been around for quite some time 82345 and then jazz carlin our own jazz carlin 823.91, but uh, because she's uh, kind of swimming through, she's already pre qualified for the Commonwealth Games, uh, is not probably in that kind of shape here, I wouldn't have thought. We'll find out soon, but uh, I wouldn't have thought right now. Yeah, we'll see Jazz later on in the morning doing the 800 eat and then going through to the 800 final. But, you know, she still had a strong performance in the 200 the other night. And, you know, I think Jazz is very much like Becky, that even when she's not rested, she can produce world class swims. But Jessica Ashwood from Australia recently went an 819.7, which was a great swim she's still very young and she came from nowhere but that's great for jazz you know they'll be competing at the commonwealth games together and that's going to be a great head-to-head -head race for them you know jazz has gone under two uh, eight twenty before so is jessica so it's going to be head and head for the commonwealth games yeah, of course, we had uh, Becky, and we've had uh, quite a few, we've had a lot of Beckys, actually, over the years, haven't we? We've had Becky Cook, we've had Becky a lot Edmonton. of Beckys, yeah. yeah. I loved Becky Cook. Becky Cook was a great 400 and 800 freestyler, won world medals, and, you know, the one thing with British swimming, we've had a lot of middle distance swimmers, you know, over the years. We've got Olympic medals, world medals, Commonwealth medals, and it's really strong, and it's still really strong, and that's a good thing to see that we still have world-class swimmers, even though we've had an Olympic gold medal retire from the swimming we've still got the likes of Jazz Carlin but it's got the potential to do exactly the same these are the swimmers born in 97 98 and in the case of Isabel Griffiths in lane number four for the city of Birmingham born in 1999 and uh, it's lane five of them Amber Keegan of Nova Centurion who is starting how do you pace an 800 I mean what what's the best strategy when you're doing it? I may mean, say so you've done it a few times how did you break yours down yeah I didn't do 800s very often and I think even when I did my last 800 which was at the World Championships in 09 I still didn't know how to swim an 800 I just got in there and for me it was a long long way to go so I used to pace it, I used to go quite steady and I always used to try and negative split an 800, no, no when I went my 816 I did actually negative split the two 400s and that's what I think they need to do because you know the world class swimmers in the world will always negative split an 800 and that's where we see them going you know 815, 816 when we saw Ledecky break that world record her back 200 was just out of this world and they need to kind of you know I, I always used to say just build up through the 800 don't go out too hard because then you'll start to fade and you need to be careful with your legs you don't want to over kick so that you've got nothing left on that last 100 and I remember at the world championships I had 50 to go because I'd never really done an 800 before I had so much energy left so I literally put my head down kicked my legs you and sprinted, went didn't you? I did because you know it's a hard event to swim I think if you're not swimming them very often it's hard hard to pace an 800 but you can see these girls here it's great that there's three of them that are kind of up there two in the lead that you know they'll be pushing each other and that's what they need here you know 800's a long way to swim on your own so they need someone in that heat to push them along the way and they are being watched by the 
double Olympic champion from 2008. Becky Addington's uh, looking to see who's going to be the uh, pretender to her previous throne. Yeah, it's great that Becky's here watching the 800. You know, she's here for a few days watching the swimming, and she'll be watching these younger girls. You know, this is the future in the pool at the moment. You know, they're still very young. They're born in 97, 98, 99. They're so young, and they've still got so much time to train. And, you know, they won't be training all the time. Obviously, these girls are still at school, so the swimming here, you know, it's great to see them. And hopefully, these are the ones that will be here in eight years' time making the Olympic Games. 500 metres gone for Amber Keegan. 534.14 is the time for her second place to Lucy Harris, 534.41. And Isabel Griffiths in third. Yeah, it's still neck and neck. They're still swimming really well at the moment, turning in 5.34 from Nova Centurion. Obviously, Amber from Nova, where Becky used to train, so it's no keeping in the Nova family. There's still a great swimmer there, which is good. And she's looking really strong. You can see that she has picked up a stroke rate a little bit. She's starting to kick her legs a little bit more. And, you know, they've got five lengths to go, so they're nearly finished, and it's great that they're pushing each other. And there's 0.5 between these two swimmers, and over an 800 metres, that's not a lot. And they're pushing each other the whole way. Well, the barrier they're trying to break for most of these is the nine-minute barrier because nobody in this field has been sub-nine minutes so far. Closest to it is Isabel Griffiths, 901.76. She is done. The 902 from Amber Keegan. Now, are they on course? Let's have a look when they get to the next mark, which will be the 600 mark, as to how close they might be to breaking that door. They, yeah, they pretty much are yeah, they on could, course. Yeah, they could go under that nine-minute mark. They have to go 69s now for these next two 100s to be able to produce that under nine-minute time, which is definitely possible. They just need to keep that stroke rate going now. They need to start kicking the legs. They've got 200 metres to go. That's when you think, you know, I've got four lengths of this pool to go. I just need to pick up that pace and start picking the stroke rate up and kicking the legs. And you can see that she's done that, she is starting to get further and further ahead of the rest of the field. Amber Keegan's best time prior to today for Nova Centurion, 9.02.94. Well, no, she's well inside that. She can keep it going at this pace. 7.16.96 is her split with 150 to go. Second is Lucy Ennis and Isabel Griffiths. And what she will hear will be a lovely noise next time round because it will be the bell. It will be like being back at school. I used to love that bell. <laughs> ready for dinner time. Yeah, when I used to hear that bell, I used to kind of breathe a sigh of relief because 800 is a long way to go for a middle distance swimmer and she's got two lengths of the pool left and it, if she can keep this going she should go under the nine minute mark she's got she needs to come back in a 109 to be able to do that but she's got 100 left so she should have left that little bit just to be able to finish off strong it's a campanologist's delight as the bells ring with 100 to go not so good for quasimodo but very good for the swimmers and mckeegan in lane number five is really uh, blazing the trail here in the first of the freestyle heats of the 800. And uh, we're going to keep an eye on that nine-minute mark, as indeed should you. Oh, she's, well, yeah, she's got to do a 35 here, and that uh, should be well within a compass, you would hope. Yeah, and Isabel Griffiths as well from City of Birmingham and had a great last 50 there. She's got a 50 to go, and you can see she's coming back really strong. You know, I don't think she's going to catch Amber. Amber's too far in front now, but it should also be a good swim for Isabel. It's green for Amber. She goes for victory in the first heat of the 800 freestyle. Watch that clock, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52. Come on. It's she nine minutes. She should break that nine yeah, minutes. Yeah, she should. Mark. She's there, she's there, she's there. She's almost there. Touch the wall. Ooh, go on. There she yeah. goes. Ooh. 8.58.66 is the time for Amber Keegan. Isabel Griffiths not quite getting inside the nine-minute mark. 9.00.48. And Lucy Ellis on the 9.02.11. So well done, Amber Keegan. First time in the eight-minute club. Yeah, and this heat next coming up, we'll have just seen that um, her go an 8.58. So they'll have know that they need to set a strong performance as well. You know, that's a good time for her. That's a good PB. And there's some of these girls in this race that have gone quicker than that before, but they need to do that this morning as well. Emily Graham takes a touch with 35 3 to finish her heat. 8.58.66 for Amber Keegan, Isabel Griffiths in second, 9 0 0 48. Sophie Ellis in one, Georgia Coates two, Philippa Shuttleworth in three, and Chloe Finch in four.
for the second heat of the 800 freestyle. There's Chloe Finch of City of Birmingham. We have got some swimmers who have been sub nine here. Clover Shuttleworth has done it. So too is Chloe Finch, Jessica Westridge, and Abigail Humphreys. All under nine minutes, all around the 8.57, 8.56 mark. So they're looking to kind of take theirs a little bit further into the eight minutes. Georgie Coach from City of Leeds has had a great start here in lane number two. And, you know, that's one thing I've noticed this week with Leeds. They're having a great meet. They've produced some great swims. So, you know, she's gone out nice and strong. You know, it's still very early days. They're in the first 50 of the 800 metres. So they just need to keep it nice and smooth and don't get too excited over the first 100 metres. City of Leeds, yellow cap most prominent looking on the far side as well for Linda Shaw the two lead swimmers are uh, separated out by seven lanes but they're virtually tracking each other stroke for stroke yeah they're both going out really strong and they both do look really smooth at the minute and like I said leads this week have just you know for the past few years we haven't really seen many lead swimmers so their training program has kind of come from nowhere they used to have some great swimmers you know I used to race a lot with some leads girls you know we had James Hickman come from leads as well so they've produced a lot of world-class swimmers and it's great to see them coming back through the rankings Claire had up people like that came yeah. through amazing swimmers yep. but leads have Sophie Evans in one and Linda Shaw in eight and at the moment is Linda Shaw in lane eight who was leading at the 100 stage cross early stages yet but uh, they are trying to break the back of this field but coming back to them in the centre lanes are Chloe Finch of City of Birmingham and Jesse Westnidge of the City of Sheffield. But Georgia Coates it is now in first place for City of Leeds. Well, they have uh, two and eight. And at the moment, two and eight are still prominent. At the middle of the pool are starting to come back onto the Leeds girls now. So, you know, this is where the race starts to happen. You know, the first hundred, you settle into that stroke rate. And then you start to build up. And you can see that the middle of the pool, they are doing that. But the two Le Leeds girls are still out in front. And looking really really strong at the moment you know great turns they're having they're pushing off the walls and getting ahead of the other girls so you know it could be a great swim for these girls here they just need to keep up this pace but turning in a 2.10.1 that's a really good first 200 split for these girls that should take them under the nine minute mark really easily if they can keep this going well georgia has never been there so far 9.0039 is her entry time the way she's going and the way she's dominated is providing she doesn't blow up of course she's on course for a fast time so too is linda Sure, and she has done a 901.13. So both of them on course for a sizable personal best here. Yeah, if they can both get under the nine minute mark, that'd be great for them. And turning in a 210, they should be able to do that. They just need to keep that going now. They need to keep that stroke rate, they can't let it die off at all. And you can see they are starting to kick their legs, but there's still a long way to go in this race for these girls. When they get to the end of this lane it will be 300 gone so still another 500 for them to go and already you can see that uh, it's proving to be a bit tough for Linda Shaw because she's slipping back in lane number eight but still going very positively and still very much at the front in fact if anything extending her lead is Georgia Coates how big is the lead at 300 it's three seconds over Chloe Finch in second and Jesse Westnidge is in third and Linda Shaw now is finally at a bit tough in lane number eight Linda's gone out a little bit too quick I think you can see her starting to fade you can see her stroke changing slightly through the 50. And, you know, that's the thing with an 800. If you go out too quick, it's a long way to go when you're feeling tired. So she is starting to fade. And the middle of the pool, you've got, you know, Jesse from City of Sheffield. They've got Coventry, Birmingham, some great clubs there. And they're all starting to pull through. This is the 350 mark. Will be 400 by the time that uh, Georgia Coates comes back down this end. Look at this lead. It's an amazingly it's big lead. Yeah, it's, it's, it's increasing uh, every single stroke. She seems to be just getting a bit further forward, but I'm watching Chloe Finch just digging in now. Chloe Finch is now starting to come back. Uh, she put a bit of a spurt on there as she went off the wall and on this 50, and then that's made Jesse Westnidge respond in lane number five. But still, what was it, three seconds before between first and second? It is even bigger now. It is now four seconds between Georgia Coates in the lead and Chloe Finch in second. Jesse Westnidge is in third place. She's about a oh, about four one hundredths behind at uh, that split. Yeah, and Georgia just turned in a 4.22.60. So she's doing a very even swim here. Her first 200 was 2.10. She's gone 2.12 there. So it is very 
very close to these 200s that she's producing. So if she can go another 212 and then maybe drop back down to a 210 on that final 200, this is going to be a great swim for her and she's going to smash that nine minute barrier. Don't there's too much doubt about that unless uh, she has similar problems to her teammate Linda Shaw in lane eight, who's uh, dropping back into seventh place now. So after trying to set the pace early on, well, she did. Uh, just finding yourself at the back of the field or getting towards the back of the field. At the very back is Abigail Humphreys at the moment of Coventry. But this is a very impressive display by Georgia Coates of the City of Leeds, who will have another 300 to go after she has turned this time in 5.28.81. Remember that lead was, what, four seconds last time? Further and further. Six now. Six over Chloe Finch. Yeah, and Chloe's had a, a great 100 there. She's starting to pull through. She is starting to pick up the pace. And, you know, whether she's seen that the girl's so far in front, she's trying to catch up. But you can see that she has picked up a straight rate. And she's getting away from the rest of the girls as well. Six seconds at the last turn. Let's see how long. It doesn't look to be getting any smaller between her and the swimmer in lane four, Chloe Finch. We'll be able to mark it once again as she turns now. So 6.02, where's Chloe Finch in relation to that? Six seconds it was before. It's about... Very uh, similar. Yeah, it's about five and a half. And you can... You can see with Georgia Coates' uh, stroke, she looks very smooth while she's swimming. She knows she's got, you know, a six-beat leg kick. That leg kick is constant, which is great to see. She hasn't faded off at all, and she's got a very smooth stroke. It is a very middle-distance, distance-type stroke. And she looks, she's putting in 100%, but it looks comfortable, which is great to see. She's not fighting to get that stroke. You know, she's having great turns as well. So, you know, she is having a very good swim here. 200 more to go for Georgia Coates, 6.36. She's still leading by five and a half seconds from Chloe Finch in second place. That's not changed. Third place is Sophie Evans, and fourth is Jesse Westnich. So the only question now should be how much inside the nine-minute barrier can the lead swimmer get? And I say, every time I look at her moving away from us down to the far, it does look like she's extending that lead. Yeah, she's getting further and further ahead. It'll be interesting to see what the split is again with this 50 to see if she's still around six seconds ahead. But she's looking really, really smooth. She's looking great. And it is good to see that she's having a strong swim. And she's now six and a half seconds ahead of second place. That's such a big lead over the rest of the field. So she has done this race all on her own. And to do that is absolutely great. That's a phenomenal swim. Well, let's try and get a marker here because uh, she's going to be at about, what, 7.43 yeah. when she when she turns here. So she's looking at about a 15-second PB, isn't she? Something yeah. like that. If she can get around the 7.50, 7.52 mark, that will be a really good swim for her. She needs to come back in around a 1.09, which she's definitely capable of doing because she's been splitting 1.09s in the race. She just needs to keep her head down and finish really strong in this race. Oh, she's been strong all the way through. Look at that, that, that gap is still extending. It's getting bigger and bigger. 7.14 it is now, and there's a six-second gap between second and third as well. But uh, this is mightily impressive from Georgia Coates of Leeds. And she doesn't seem to be showing any signs of backing off. She's going to go for it. She heard the bell, which will be a great spur to her, great encouragement to go and finish this off and finish it off in style. She needs to put her head down and finish really strong now. She's got less than 50 metres to go, and this is going to be a great swim. You can see that her legs are starting to kick a little bit more. She just needs to have a great, strong finish here. How much inside nine minutes can she get? She's never been in that territory before. She's going to be now. Can it be 10 seconds? Can it be 15 seconds? It was 10 at least, you would think, now. Yeah, definitely going to go into the 8.50 bar. Brilliant hey, swim. 48, swim 28. Morning. Well done. 13 second PB. Massive improvement for Georgia Coates. That's a brilliant heat swim for her this morning. You can see she's got a little smile on her face. Obviously, she's just at an 800, so it's a long way to go. But, you know, in second there, Chloe Finch on an 8.56 as well. So, you know, she was she's just done a PB there. She was on her PB, so another strong swim for her. And then Sophie Evans in a 9.03. She's a 99 baby she is so young <laughs> fantastic display from her and here 
is the finish of that race and she never looked to be tiring she didn't all the way through she looked strong through the whole of that race she kept it constant she kept it going and she had a really strong finish and she'll be really pleased with that swim this morning 848 28 for her 856 25 so a big improvement for chloe finch as well and we're going to go on to the third heat of the 800 freestyle you're going to take over now and a certain carrie ann payne is going to move into position so i'm going to say goodbye and i'll catch you later So we're now in heat three of the women's 800 free. And we've got no Megan Gilchrist going in lane five. She was with, withdrawn from the 800, but we have got Ellie Faulkner. But I will welcome in to the uh, the groove here, Kerry Ann Payne, who has been doing the other commentation. It's nice to see you here. Thanks for having me. And we got said earlier, we were like the Spice Girls and you were Posh Spice. <laughs> so I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. And I said I was Ginger Spice. So I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing for both of us. Still power. So yeah, we've got Ellie Faulkner in lane four. She went the Olympic Games for the 800 freestyle had a very disappointing year last year you know some of the girls that went to the Olympics did struggle so it's great to see her back she had a great 200 the other night so it'll be good to see her do a heat good heat swim this morning to go into the final tomorrow evening yeah she looks to had to have had a really good start so far she's just this first hundred of the 800 you really don't want it to be too hard because it's a long way if you go out too hard so she looks really steady she looks nice and calm um, she seems to be having a really good race so far so Kerry ann you were one of the uh, top british 800 swimmers do you wish you were in the pool now swimming with these <laughs> girls um i probably wish i was doing the last 50 maybe not all of the the 800 it's just it's just one of those events there's not many people so you know if you do a 200 you can go up to a 400 if you do a 200 you can go down to to the 100 there's not that many people that end up doing you know the 800 and the yeah. 400 and the 200 apart from you know amazing people like yourself and, and rebecca adlington that just have this ability to do to do all of those races but the 800 there's just a different tactic to it it's yeah. just a different part to the race that you you know if you go out too hard then you know that's it for you know another 600 meters if the first 100 is too hard it's a long way to go the 800 meters and we can see it. ellie falconer has taken it out really well she's in first at 150 turning in 134.5 and also eleanor jones in lane number eight has had a great start but like we saw in the heat earlier we saw one of the girls out in lane eight that did start a little bit too hard and struggled with that last 200 meters so you know they just keep, need to keep it nice and strong and smooth but ellie at the moment is looking like she's having a great heat swim and this will be the 200 turn see what time she turns in 207.3 so a strong start for her you know she has gone out quickly before but it is just a heat swim and it's a long way to go and they have got the final tomorrow night that she will hopefully produce in a fast time in yeah, it's a little bit of a shame that, that Megan Gilchrist pulled out. Um, she didn't quite get her Scottish time last week, so um, I'm not sure what's happened there. But Danielle Huskisson, she managed to just do the heats last week of the, the Scottish Nationals because she's English, and she had a really great heat swim. So she'll be looking to try and keep on Ellie's feet the whole way through this 800. As you can see, Ellie has still got her lead here, turning in 2.40. She's 0.8 ahead of Eleanor Jones, so it's still a really, really close race. And you've got lane six as well, Camilla from City of Glasgow. So trains in this pool as well, so this will be great for her competing in her home pool, where the Commonwealth Games is going to be turning in a 2.41. So it is very close between these girls at the moment, but, you know, Ellie has still got that lead, and she's still looking really good at the moment. Yeah, it's quite interesting when you watch an 800 to see all the swimming coaches on the side of the pool. They're all cheering everybody on going a little bit crazy on the side for the whole of the 800 but you know Ellie she just had another great turn over there so she'll just be looking at this point now to try and push on from that first 200 and try and really start reeling in the rest of this 800. Yeah and we saw earlier world class swims that have gone in the Australian trials we saw Jessica Ashwood who's number one in the world this morning this year on a 819.7 and Belmonte 8.23 so these girls are once to be going to be producing these times this year you know, 8.19 is a phenomenal swim for Jessica. She's so young. She's 21 years of age. And she is going to be coming over here to the Commonwealth Games to race the likes of Jazz Carlin. And hopefully, Eleanor, she can get that qualifying time. It's going to be a fantastic race. Yeah, I think I'm really looking forward to seeing Jazz in the next heat as well to see how she's swimming at the moment. But, you know, Ellie is, um, this is the only qualification chance that she's going to get, you know, for, for that England team. And she has been just a second, pretty much a second out of what the nomination time is so she is capable of doing it she's looking maybe a little tired now or, or lane eight um, seems to be doing Eleanor Jones seems to be doing a really good uh, heat swim so far you know she's just turned there in a 419 one two so 
it's not the fastest time that we've ever seen her do for, for the first 400, but it is a heat swim, and she knows that she's only got one heat left. Yeah, we've, we've spoke about these nomination times. They're tough times, top three in the Commonwealth Games from last year. And you've got the likes of, you've got some of the Canadian girls, you've got Lauren Boyle from New Zealand, who had a great few years. She's from really well. You know, it's not tough for these girls and the guys to get the times, but this is what we need to do to work, move on in the world of swimming. Yeah, well, with Rebecca Adlington, you know, she's no longer with us in the in the pool now doing these 800s, and we really want to see another another generation coming up, and Jazz has started that, so if we can have Jazz, have Jazz and Ellie just, you know, pushing each other to keep going, and, and like you talk about the Commonwealth Times, you were still talking then about Jessica Ashwood in 819. Lauren Boyle last year at the World Championship, she did an 818 in that final to come third, so just to get a medal like the Commonwealth, you're going to have to go under 820. Yeah, and we can see uh, Ellie Falcon here still leading at 600, 500 metres. Sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting ahead of my time there. 500 metres turning in at 524.3. So she has dropped off a little bit. She does need to pick up that pace. You know, there's eight girls that can go through to the final, and we've got a few tough girls in that next heat. But we know Jazz hasn't rested for these trials here. She's pre-qualified for the Welsh team, so she's in hard training. So it'll be interesting to see how she she does in the heat this morning to then produce a good swim in that final tomorrow night. Yeah, we see now that uh, Danielle Huskisson in lane three, she's really coming up. She uh, came to altitude with me uh, early last season, 2013, and uh, she came up there with me to see how, how we got on our us. It meant I was just swimming up there by myself. So it was really nice to swim with her and to see how she's training. And she really seems to be coming on now. And like I said, she was going to want to stick on Ellie's feet, which is exactly what she's doing. And now that we're coming up to the last 200, they're really going to have to start reeling this in and trying to bring their legs in for the last 200 to have a really great morning swim so you used to do the 800 but you also did the open water as well that's where you got your olympic silver medal and your <laughs> world medals in loads of different colors is there any similarity with the 800 or the open water i would say to to do a really great uh, open water swim you have to have a good 800 it has to be part of that open water now is almost becoming a bit of a sprint like the 800 is now it is becoming a bit of a sprint you've got to go 818 yeah. to kind of be anywhere near the medals so it's the same for, for the for the open water you have to have that sprint and that's when you know we see the 200 girls coming up to the 800 um it's just adding that speed in and, and, and having the ability on that last 200 to be coming home in close to, you know, 203, 204. I guess the 800 in the pool though is a lot friendlier than a 10K <laughs> in open water. Yeah, I've never got a black eye actually <laughs> swimming in 800. So, um, yeah, no, it's very, fairly different. There's lots of stuff happening, but um, it's just great to see that, you know, we are still pushing that through. So Danielle Huskins, she's really young, but she's coming up there now as well. And, and now we've got Ellie coming in to the, to the second last 100. Which well, has done a really good job. She started to bring her legs in a little bit. She's got that lead a bit more over Danielle Huskisson in lane three. Yeah, we are down to the last hundred now in this third heat. We've got Ellie Falconer that is taking that, and she's just turned in a 7.35.1. So she's got 100 metres to go. So it's still going to be a strong performance. The last heat was won in an 8.48.28. So, you know, hopefully, well, she should be able to go quicker than that in this one. You know, it's, she just needs to put her head down, keep her straight rate up, and kick her legs as well. She's got 100 metres to go go and then she's got nearly over a whole day to rest for the final tomorrow night i know so she's going to really want to make sure she gets this under an 840 i would say to have a really great heat swim she'll probably have wanted to go a little bit faster this morning but you know it's a morning swim you're swimming on your own it is always going to be quite tough but danielle Huskin Huskison is not letting her go she's just going with her now on that last 50 meters and it'll be a little bit of a race i think to see how that all goes yeah, it is getting very close behind Ellie. Now you've got Daniel Hutchinson and also Eleanor Jones in lane number eight. They're both having great swims, and we've seen a lot of people in lane one and eight have kind of outside burner swims uh, this week, which is great to see. But their times are going to be a really good, so it'll be interesting to see how close they are to their PBs. And now we come right to the end, and Ellie just managed to win that then in an 8.39.15, with Danielle Huskisson second from the University of Stirling in an 8.39.33. And third, up in lane eight, outside smoker, was Eleanor Jones from Swansea in an 8.43.42. Yeah, great swim there 
there for Eleanor Jones. That's 10 seconds under her PB, so absolute brilliant swim. Ellie going in 8.39.1, so a really strong heat performance for her. She doesn't look that happy with her swim. She doesn't have a smile on her face, but she has just done an 800 metres. But we can see the results there. Ellie Faulkner in 8.39.1, Daniela Hutchinson in 8.39.3, with Eleanor Jones in third in 8.43.4. So, you know, that should take them girls through to the final tomorrow evening. I just saw Jazz have a little look back at the clock just to see what times these girls have done. So she'll now decide on how she's going to swim this race, whether she needs to go out hard or whether she's just going to kind of reel it in and make sure she wins. So we are to heat for the last event of the morning and we've got Jazz Carlin in lane number four. So lane one, we've got Lauren Walton from Beckenham, two, Rachel Williamson from Kingston upon Hull, three, Rachel Williams from Bath University, and then the one and only Jasmine Carlin in lane number four from Swansea, five, Jessica Tillman from Derwentside, who's come over from America to race here, who trains out in Florida, Alicia Thornton from, in six from Loughborough University, who actually qualified for the Commonwealth Games for Scotland last week, so it'll be interesting to see how she gets on. In seven, Georgia Darwin from City of Newcastle, and number a Alice Derwin from Royal Wolverhampton. Well, I think that that is my time in the commentary box over. Thank you very much for I've having me, I've enjoyed having you carry on. It's been good fun. The girls have, girls have been ruling uh, the last heat. <laughs> and I'll pass you back on to Bob Ballard. <laughs> And you can see Jazz has had a great first 100, but it is still early days in this 800. You can see her with the uh, the pink suit in the back, and she has been working on her turns and her start over the past year, because that's where she struggled with. Her turns were never that strong compared to the best people in the world, so it's good to see that she's improved on there, because, you know, the world best swimmers at the moment are going under 820, and that's what she's going to need to do at the Commonwealth Games to get a medal, because it's so hard, the 800 freestyle at the minute. Did you miss me? I did miss you. As I was to say, it's not Carrie Ann anymore. She, uh, her voice hasn't Hello. broken. It's now Bob. <laughs> He's back. I'm back. Thank you very much for holding the fort, Carrie Ann. She's gone back to her studio job. I'm going to finish things off with the last heat of the 800 metres freestyle. I was interested to see Ellie Faulkner. I don't think she was that happy with the time. I heard you mentioning that. I looked at her face as she looked at the clock, and I think she thought that she got a bit quicker than that. Yeah, it looked tough for her. Watching back up here, she didn't have a smile on her face when she finished in. She looked tired, you know. It was a it was a strong swim, but it wasn't what she was hoping for. She hasn't had, you know, a great year leading up to this, so she would have wanted to have a strong heat performance, and she didn't look happy with it. But you know, that's what happens with swimming. You do have tough performances. You just need to forget about them, and she needs to now go rest for that final tomorrow evening. Jazz Carlin has uh, got the third best time in the world, 8:23.91, set in Marseille earlier on this year at the Open Mediterranean meeting. That is the uh, time just by Maria Belmonte and Jessica Ashwood. 8.23.91 now, as we've uh, mentioned, she is pre-selected for the Commonwealth Games later this year for Wales, so she's not in optimum swimming performance mode at the moment. She's kind of in between in terms of a taper, so we're not expecting anything radical or brilliant here. It's just something nice and solid from her. Yeah, Jazz hasn't rested for this meet, but I still think she's going to have a really strong performance in that final tomorrow evening. I've seen Jazz over the past year, even when she's not rested, she's produced world-class swims. She she wasn't rested when she went 8.23.9 earlier in the year. So if she can get somewhere close to that, that puts her in good contention for the Commonwealth Games. You know, that is going to be a tough final. You've got Lauren Boyle, you've got Jessica Ashwood. It's tough. They're, they're in the top 10 in the world this year. Lauren Boyle has got world medals. You know, it's going to be a great race and Jazz is going to be a part of that. And it's a home games for her. It's going to be a lot of fun. You know, the Commonwealth Games is fun compared to some of the other events. You all have a laugh together. You, it's just a great time. So she'll take that you know she missed the olympic games unfortunately so she hasn't experienced the home games yet so it'll be a lot of fun for her she's repping 63s at the moment for her first 300 around about the 308 mark so that's all right that's nice and comfortable would put her on course for around about 
uh, 8.25, 8.26, something like that, if she can keep it going at that speed. She doesn't need to, of course, because it's uh, top eight times will qualify. She knows she's comfortably within that zone. She should be the fastest qualifier from this field on current standings, and she has a lead, as you can see, visibly of about uh, seven to eight body lengths. Certainly big in terms of time. I want to see her hit the uh, touchpad at this end in around about a four. 11 4 12 if she can and she's going to be right on 4 12 territory 4 13 actually just outside 4 13 20 so uh Double that around about an 8.30, I suppose. That's a good split for Jazz over that first 400. And Jazz is really good at keeping that time going. You never really see her die in an 800 meter. She comes back really strong. So if she can get under that 8.30 mark, that's a really good strong swim for her this morning. But we've also got Jess Tillman, who's second at the moment, who's actually out. She's racing for Derwent side here, but she trains out in Florida in America. So it'll be interesting to see how she does here coming back from America. She knows she'll be a little bit jet lagged, but she swam really well last year in the 800 freestyle so you know going out to Florida hopefully that's improved her stroke improved her technique and she can also produce a good swim and she have been doing yards not meters that's right out there yeah a lot of their racing and training is in yards I've never raced yards but it's a quick when you get to race yards you see their times and you're like wow it's amazing so it'll be interesting to see how then she equates to that coming into a long course meet so Jazz Carlin pretty much as she has to do domestically these days out on her own in the 800 freestyle this is the 500 split at 517.53 Jess Thielman coming in for the second turn 522.64 and third place will be Aisha Thornton in 525.86 so what, what do you think Jazz would be happy with today time wise? I think if she can get anywhere around the, you know, 8.30, 8.28 mark, I think she'll be happy with that for a heat swim. She'll always have in the back of her mind that the heats at the Commonwealth Games is going to be tough to make it through to the final. And I've never seen Jazz do an easy race. That's one thing I will say about Jazz. Whether it's a heat, a semi-final, 200, 400, she always puts in a strong performance. And she's practicing that for when she goes to the World Championships because, you know, we saw her miss a couple of finals in a few places. And, you know, it's so easy to miss a final at the World Championships and Olympic Games, you can miss them by point one if you don't have a strong heat swim. And Jazz has got so much potential. She was really unfortunate to not get a medal at the World Championships last year. I thought before the game she was going to go there and bring us back three medals. So, and I know she was a little bit disappointed with how she did. And she's such a determined swimmer. You know, Jazz is an incredible trainer, an incredible racer. And, you know, I think she's going to be one to watch, especially at the Commonwealth Games and then Rio in 2016. What about the legacy, though, of the injury that she picked up? and the illness she picked up in 2012. That must have had a debilitating effect. Is she fully over that now, do you think? It's always hard to get back from an injury and illness, and Jazz suffered a lot through injury and illness. And, you know, it's hard to see a world-class swimmer go through times like that. You saw a struggle, and, you know, I've, I've known Jazz for a long time, and I remember speaking to her at Olympic trials, and, you know, it broke your heart when you saw how upset she was and how much she missed it, because the year before Commonwealth Games, she swam amazing. She came from nowhere. She picked up medals in Delhi, and she was a part of my relay in, in Rome as well in the 4x2 in the freestyle relay and she swam incredible so you know it means so much to her to get back in and it does take a while to get over injury but I've seen her race, I've been seeing her train recently and you know she's a world class trainer, she gets in there, she races against boys and she's beating them, she can keep going she's like a machine and you know it's such a pleasure to watch her race and she's turning in an 8.26.5 here so she just needs to keep that going and I, she should be able to go around 8.30 this morning in the heat. Well she's going to win this by a substantial amount. She is leading by nine seconds on that uh, penultimate turn. And if anything, she's pulling away from Jess Thielman, who has about five body lengths advantage over third place and Aisha Thornton. But Jazz Carlin will be aware, I'm sure. She'll have had uh, some indications from Paul Deck about how she's looking time-wise. 7.58.64. Yeah, she's certainly on course for uh, 8.30 here. Yeah, she should be able to go in 8.30 here. And Aisha Thornton, who's in third at the moment, has pre-qualified for the Scottish team, so it's great to see her backing that up from last week, and hopefully she can make that final as well tomorrow night but this is just jazz you can watch her swim there 
she's looking smooth she's looking strong and she's looking really good and she should be really pleased that she's going to easily make that final tomorrow night going in fastest by quite a long way it's just what she can do in that final around about the 8.30 mark 8.29.77 even better than we anticipated from Jazz Carlin big margin of victory as well have to wait some time for Jess Tillman to come in to follow us she's already had time to take her cap off and get reset 8.40 look at that 11 seconds virtually between first and second Aisha Thornton 8.43.40 so in retrospect and in comparison I think Ellie Thornton will be quite happy with her swim because she's the second fastest this morning yeah it's always hard if you're not in the last heat to know what time to go but looking at Jazz there you know she doesn't look too out of breath she doesn't look too tired so you know I think there's a lot to come from her tomorrow night and I'm really looking forward to seeing that time that she can produce in the final so here come those times for you 8.29.77 sub 8.30 good from Jazz Carlin Jessica Tillman 8.40.71 and Aisha Thornton of Scotland 8.43.40 in third well, very nice commentary there, Kerry Ann. I thoroughly enjoyed listening to that. Now, uh, Georgia Coates had a good swim. Just a, a couple of names out there that had good swims in the heat. Yeah, it's so it's so good to see the youngsters are really doing well. She was in a heat kind of all on her own uh, from Leeds, and she just absolutely nailed that swim. Did a massive PB, so that was really good to see. And any others up and coming that you, you saw in there? Well, it's good to see Danielle Huskisson doing well. Uh, she kept on Ellie's, Ellie Faulkner's feet the whole way through that race. It was a fight to the finish, so it will be really Really interesting to see how those girls all swim tonight but again for Jazz such a, a really good morning swim you know she didn't have to go that fast but she wanted to she's not as rested as everybody else will be at the moment but if she wants to be racing the best in the world if she wants to be in that final at the Commonwealth Games she has to go fast times in the morning the yeah. New Zealand uh, Lauren Boyle she did an 827 I think in the final of the New Zealand trial so Jazz is doing 829 in the morning it's a good start well speaking of fast times we now have an exciting uh, opportunity we have a swim off for the women's 100 meter freestyle. And the details are these Magdalena Seigen and Sean Morgan are going to swim off. Well, we think it's the first reserve place, is it not, for yeah. the uh, semi final of the 100 freestyle? I love a good swim off. I don't know if they love it, but no. I like watching them. Can you imagine a swim off in an 800 freestyle? I think you'd have to toss a coin and just <laughs> heads or tails, and whoever gets it gets it. I mean, it is possible, it rarely happens over those kinds of just It happens quite a lot in sprint freestyle and things like that, but not too often over 800. So they've got to do it all over again. And of course, what always happens in a swim off, invariably, they go much quicker than they did when they swam originally. And you think, well, if that's the case, why didn't you do that the first time round? You always see that. You always see them go a lot quicker, and then that would actually put them into the semi-final, unfortunately, but then they miss it. So, you know, it'll, hopefully they've recovered from the 100 freestyle earlier to get ready for the swim-off. Sean Morgan in five, Magdalena Sagan of Leeds in lane number four. When you're ready, girls, or when they're ready for you, more to the point. 100 freestyle is uh, an event you did sometimes, didn't you? It wasn't your favourite event. You, you were basically 400 and 200, but you did do the 100 occasion. Yeah, you? I did the 100 now and again. I was a part, part of the 4x1 um, at World Shark Course in Manchester. So, you know, I got the fast switch out now and again. It just wasn't that fast. No. Oh, OK, I thought you were on medication for that. <laughs> Magdalena Sagan in four, Sean Morgan in five. Leeds and Edinburgh represented here. I don't have the uh, sheets from earlier, but I can absolutely guarantee that both these girls will go considerably quicker now than they did earlier on today. And it's exciting to watch, you know, they're going to head to head again. They've already raced this morning, so, you know, they need to have recovered and they need to get ready. And you can see that they're fighting out. And, you know, it's exciting, you know, it's really nerve wracking for them. There's only two of them in the pool, but they've had a great start here, turning in 27.81 for Sia Morgan of Edinburgh. So she's had a great start, and she does look like she is pulling away from uh, the other lane. Well, she probably put too much in reserve for that top 16 and uh, missed out but she'll be there waiting in the wings hoping that somebody else pulls out later on because she's going to take this very comfortably this is going to be much much quicker i'm sure than she went earlier on today though magdalena Sagan has not given up she is coming back she's given herself too much to do over the last 15 it's going to be sean morgan who takes it in 57.20 uh, pound to a 
penny, that would have been good enough to make a top 16 time automatically. Second place, Magdalena Saigon, 58.04. And you're supposed to have all through that again. 57-2-0 then for Sean Morgan, who will wait on the sidelines, hoping that she might get an entry into the top 16. Swim-offs are always so tough, aren't they, Kerry ann Yeah, especially when you have to wait at, till the end of the session, yeah. and then it's just the two of you, and you're looking at each other in the courtroom, and you're like, <laughs> and that look, yeah, that look indeed. <laughs> now, tonight's finals, semi-finals are going to be good, aren't they? Yeah, it's all going to be um, a really interesting watch tonight. I think that kind of seems to be the word I keep saying tonight. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing all of the swims tonight. So seeing Fran, seeing what she can do in the final of 100 freestyle, I think that's the race that I'm going to be looking at for tonight. Indeed. And any others? Uh, the girls' 200 medley as well. I'm going to yeah. look to see uh, Siobhan Marie O'Connor in that one, see how she's she gets on. She's had a great week, hasn't yeah, she? Yeah, she's had a fantastic week. So really looking forward to seeing how she's going to go tonight in that in that race. Then the women's 100 breaststroke. It's just all about the girls today. <laughs> it is indeed. We have, we have spoken a lot about the girls, but the guys have had their time also yes. as well. Now, tonight is a little bit different because we are coming live on Sky Sports 2 from 6 o'clock. We will have the live stream still here. Uh, that's starting at 10 to 6. But that's with your lovely self, Kerry ann And yeah. Rachel Wise is going to be presenting that on behalf of Sky Sports as well. So make sure that you do stay tuned. You've got your options. You've got Sky Sports. But make sure you tune in. And you've also got your live stream if you don't have Sky as well. So an evening of great action tonight. So that's starting back on the live stream at 10 to 6. Or alternatively, Sky Sports 2 at 6 o'clock tonight. Don't miss it.